Foundation. Thank you, teachers. You're watching Dr. Pepper Championship Week. So here's what you missed, an onside kick attempt by Memphis that fails. Watch two players signal for a fair catch, so interference is called on Memphis's Calvin Austin. The Tigers give up a touchdown because they committed a penalty on a field goal by Cincinnati. Two special teams penalties on the opening drive lead to that touchdown by Warren, but good response by Mike Norvell's Tigers, who are now inside the 25-yard line. It's been an excellent answer from this Memphis offense. We have a bunch of veteran players that are very, very comfortable playing from behind and scoring and manufacturing a lot of points. Brady White on second down and nine, hands it off to Patrick Taylor, and it's a first down. Taylor missed eight games this year due to injury. He was their star running back a year ago. Obviously, Kenneth Gainwell has taken that mantle and run with it, but Taylor is still a very good option. He stays in the game here with short yardage situation. And White able to get the first down on third and one. That was a heads-up play there by Brady White. Because defensively, Brian Wright, the linebacker for Cincinnati, number 11, was in the backfield immediately. So instead of trying to hand it off, Brady White says, hey, no, I'm going to salvage something from this. Understood how many yards he needed, and he picked up the key conversion. From the 13-yard line, draw play here. And a good job at the point of attack by Brian Wright. May have injured himself in making the tackle, but Wright, who's a first-team American Conference linebacker with a tackle on Taylor at the line of scrimmage. And he looks the part, man. I mean, six foot three, 240 pounds. The Memphis coaches said, hey, when we went on the field, we took a peek at number 11. We said, my goodness, he's a good-looking football player. Second down and eight, pass play here. White still on the move, now fires to the back of the end zone. A one-handed attempt by Magnifico, but he couldn't come up with it. It'll be third down and eight for Memphis. There's a good effort here on the scramble drill opportunity by White. When you're throwing it in the end zone, high is not a problem because if it's over the receiver's head, no problem, incomplete, piece of cake. You're gonna miss, miss high. That was a good job of trying to make something out of nothing and almost reeling it in. On third down and eight, White from the pocket has to step up. Loves it. It's caught by Taylor, but out of bounds. Let's see if it bounced. It's incomplete. Fourth down and eight, and Memphis will send on the field goal team. And you'll see this bounce. Tried to reel it in with one hand. It was actually a pretty good throw there by Brady White over the top of the defender. But unfortunately, Taylor was unable to reel it in. A good job by Cincinnati's defense holding in the red zone. So Riley Patterson, first-team all-conference kicker, only missed twice this year, 29-yard try. And he puts it through. Memphis is on the board. It's 7-3 Cincinnati. The American Athletic Conference Championship game on ABC is brought to you by Goodyear. Celebrating those who rise above. Goodyear, more driven. And checks. Pre game to post game. Checks is full of possibilities. The king had an arm. <laughs> Absolutely. Elvis the king, man. Memphis's adopted son, no doubt. Welcome back to the American Athletic Conference Football Championship. This is part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Winner of this game has a great chance of going to the Cotton Bowl. Memphis ranked 17th. Boise State is 19th ahead of Cincinnati, so we'll see if the Bearcats were to win this game and if Boise State routes Hawaii in the Mountain West Championship. Who gets in? 
Obviously, if Memphis wins this game, and the Tigers, you would imagine, would be the team that represents the group of five. In a New Year's Six game, is the highest ranked group of five champ. Patterson's kick through the end zone for a touchback. So there's a lot going on here. These teams playing for the second time in eight days. A uh, spot in a New Year's Six bowl at stake, and also a potential coaching change at Memphis. It, ESPN reported yesterday that Mike Norvell is the leading candidate to be the next head coach at Florida State, and that an announcement could come as early as tomorrow. Yeah, I think that Mike Norvell has done such a great job here at Memphis, and I know that if I had a coaching vacancy, he would be at the top of my list for certain. I don't think it's any surprise that Florida State would be very interested in what he's accomplished. Pump fake, and Ritter going deep down the sideline, incomplete. Try to hit Alec Pierce. We're having some technical difficulties with Tom Luganbill's microphone, our sideline analyst, but I know that Tom spoke with Mike Norvell before the game and asked him if he addressed it with the team. Norvell said no, and the reason was that nobody has asked him. Obviously, Norvell's not going to say anything at this point about his future, but it will be interesting to see how the players react given all the noise surrounding the potential of Norvell leaving. On the jet sweep, here's Trey Tucker, true freshman. They like to get him involved in both the run game and as a pass catcher, and he gets about eight yards on the play. And Trey Tucker's a guy that only had a few touches last week, two or three touches. They'd like to double that, maybe triple that, because when you see number 21 in the game for Cincinnati, he is a dynamo with his speed and athleticism. Here on a third down and short, though, you got to think, it's going to be a run play inside for Cincinnati. Try to lean on that physicality. Memphis crowding the box and Warren able to get the first down out to the 38 yard line. Two 10 win seasons for Mike Norvell as the head coach at Memphis. For Cincinnati, Luke Fickle has won 10 plus games two straight years after a 4 and 8 record his first season at Cincinnati. Former Ohio State Buckeye interim head coach after the Jim, Tress, uh, Jim Tressel dismissal in 2011 and a longtime assistant with the Buckeyes. Ritter's pass and intended for Pierce. The second down and 10. Pierce, their leading receiver. We haven't seen much so far from Ritter in the passing game. A couple short throws. That was really the first one that would challenge that injured right shoulder. A little bit off the mark there, throwing the out route to his left. We'll continue to monitor that and see if that injury does, in fact, affect his accuracy. He did not start in this game a week ago. As he dumps it off here to Jackson, a short game, going to bring up third and long. He injured his throwing shoulder against USF, started 23 consecutive games, kind of fought through that game and the game after that as well, but did not go last week. Faced with a third and eight here. And on third down, they're always trying to find their talented tight end. Josiah DeGuara, here he is, lined up at number three, potentially working against man coverage. Ritter finds DeGuara, and it is a first down. DeGuara, who's going to play in the Senior Bowl, one of the top tight ends in college football, picks up 13 and moves the chains. And you're just going to see a nice little out route that's off of a slight delay. Watch DeGuara, nice and easy, running away from the inside leverage of that defender. Cincinnati in Memphis territory. Ritter, long pass, deflected. Incomplete, almost picked off by Francis. It was intended for Rashad Medeiros. Really fortunate here. See the ball get tipped, and sometimes when those defenders are chasing, that tipped ball can easily result in an interception heading the other way. Right there, Francis almost there, but the ball comes up just short. Fortunate break there for Cincinnati. Play action pass, Ritter looking deep, taking a shot for Tucker, can't adjust. Ball overthrown with Claybrooks in coverage. Tucker trying to adjust to the ball. Third down. A lot of 
air under this football. Just drifts a little bit outside. As you see, Tucker was trying to work to that hash. The ball was thrown wide, so he had to move on it. It's a missed opportunity there from Desmond Ritter. On third and ten, stepping up and sacked. Austin Hall was there first for Memphis. Just all-out pressure from Memphis. Every gap accounted for, they squeeze it, and as a result, number 41 on the outside is unblocked. Ritter does a good job of avoiding the rush early. But as he moves up in the pocket, he runs into a lot of blue jerseys. It's a good job on the blitz there from Memphis. James Smith punting it to Travion Samuel, who gets out of the way. The Bearcats are down there, and they will touch it as it rolls to a halt at the two-yard line. Terrific punt by Smith. 7-3, Bearcats. It's B Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. They pass Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville in Memphis for the American Championship. 7-3 Cincinnati leads Memphis. And the Tigers backed up after a great punt. Brady White rolling out from his end zone, and his pass is caught out of the eight-yard line by Coxey, wrestled to the ground by Jarrell White, and a gain of about five. So far, Memphis has done a pretty good job of adjusting the launch point for Brady White, getting him out, getting him on the move, knowing that there's some disruptive guys up front for Cincinnati. Being able to move the pocket's important. Memphis, 11 wins on the season, a school record in the championship game for the third straight year. And a draw play. And again, Cincinnati does a pretty good job defensively against that play. Not much for Gainwell, maybe a yard. So it's going to bring up third down. Marcus Brown made the tackle along with Brian Wright. Critical third down here when you're backed up. The most important aspect is to get one first down so you're not punting out of your own end zone. So this is a critical down and distance as you see overload quad receivers to the left for Brady White. That was a look at Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator for Cincinnati. As White's pass down the field is knocked away incomplete. Gibson, the intended receiver, Arquan Bush in coverage with a nice play to force a punt. And really surprised here. If you look at the route on the outside, it's all you need for the first down. They're working against Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant falls down. Brady White doesn't even look into the flats. Instead, he tries to work one-on-one -on -one downfield against good coverage. If he just starts low and works that flat, they have first and 10 at around the 15. Adam Williams just got it away. Flag is down, a lot of contact. On the return, they're in the Memphis territory, but let's see if this was roughing the punter. The way roughing or running into, it's going to be five yards or 15. Either way, it's likely to result in a first down for Memphis. Kopeka Rodsky with... Running into the kicker. Defense number 30. A five-yard penalty results in the first down. We saw a similar penalty called on Memphis that took points off the board for Cincinnati but led to a touchdown. Now, if he would have gotten a piece of that ball, you can make contact with the kicker, but did not look like he did, right? Doesn't look like he did. And the reaction didn't make you think that and he got a piece of it. Yeah. Obviously, had he, he might have grabbed his finger or looked over at the referee, but body language would tell you that he didn't get a piece. Hand off here to Taylor on first down. Dragged down at the 32. 
gain of about seven. Greg, you know, you were talking about Brady White and this offense and Mike Norvell changing the launch point as we see some tempo here. I was standing next to Mike Norvell as he visited with Brady White on the previous series in the red zone. He said, go ahead and run the football if there's nothing in front of you. There's a lot of green grass for your legs. And a first down for Taylor out to the 35-yard line. Really running the ball well against this Cincinnati defense. And this is really tough. You see the pullers, the left guard and Joey Magnifico at tight end, pulling around with a lot of bodies out in front. You see Magnifico, number 86, getting a good piece of Derek Forrest, the safety. Already 55 rushing yards for Memphis, and now White throwing the ball deep and out of bounds. Going for Coxie, well covered by true freshman Ahmad Gardner. So White is a junior. He is from Santa Clarita, California. He was number 79 overall in the 2015 ESPN 300. He graduated from Arizona State two years ago, then transferred to Memphis. He's 23 years old. He started every game since last season, a record of 19 and 7. He does have one more year left of eligibility. Eighth in the country in touchdown passes. 32, including two last week in the win against the Bearcats. Got Antonio Gibson in the backfield. Versatile player. And they're going to give it to Gibson. Well, rushing touchdown last week and gets to the outside here. Past midfield. And he might go inside the 30. He takes it into the end zone for the touchdown. 65 yards. touchdown last week and now goes for 65 his fourth rushing touchdown he also has seven receiving touchdowns and a kick return for a score this year and Memphis has the lead well if you look at last week Antonio Gibson was the difference providing some big-time plays as a versatile weapon, both the receiver and at running back, he's walking with his feet 10 feet off of Beal as they take the lead. So a wild first quarter, you have a penalty against Memphis that leads to a Cincinnati touchdown. The special teams penalty running into the kicker. Then Cincinnati runs into the kicker. Memphis punted the ball. Cincinnati was going to have it in Memphis territory, but because of the penalty, it leads to a Memphis first down, and then the Tigers go 65 yards on the ground for a score and take a 10-7 lead. From the five-yard line, here's Tucker, and he gets drilled at the 20. It's an incredible effort on the touchdown by Gibson, but I want to give a little love to the offensive lineman, Manuel Arona Lopez. You watch number six, Perry Young, trying to work to the far side. Arona Lopez adjusts, gets a piece of him, and Antonio Gibson does a great job cutting it back off that block, breaking the tackle from Brian Wright, number 11, the linebacker, and putting on the Jets as he bursts into the open field. If you look at Brian Wright, he tries to strip it from behind right there, but he doesn't have enough speed to catch up to the explosive Antonio Gibson. Well, look at that. They lead the country in explosive plays. 31 plays of 40 yards or more in the season. Now a pass play over the head of the tight end, LaBelle. He couldn't come up with it. He had Clay Brooks in trouble after that long delay of play action by Desmond Ritter. And Gibson is such a handful because he's a receiver, but he's 220, 225 pounds and is very comfortable lining up in the backfield and acting as a running back. So what do you cover him with? You can't cover him with a linebacker, obviously, but he runs like a running back. So he is a matchup nightmare and has been a big, big part of this offense these last couple weeks and creating some plays against Cincinnati. Second and 10 for Cincinnati. Quarterback keeper here and Ritter. 
Able to get the first down and step out of play at the 33-yard line and gain of 12 on the play for Ritter. Yeah, and watch the end man on the line of scrimmage as, as you see Dorseus react to that mesh. And as soon as he chases the running back, that's a pull read for Desmond Ritter on the zone read. Excellent job by the quarterback bursting into the open field and making a play. And Greg, that's where last week Memphis didn't have to deal with that from the quarterback position with Ben Bryant the backup. Ritter long throw behind the intended receiver Thomas Geddes. Ritter, a redshirt sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. San Xavier High School. He was the rookie of the year in the American Conference last season. 19-3 as a starter. Did not play, though, last week against Memphis. Cincinnati lost that game by 10. Had Cincinnati won the game, these two teams still would have played each other. The game would have been, though, at Cincinnati. The winner has a great possibility of playing in a New Year's Six game. To be the Cotton Bowl, Warren on the direct snap. Past the 40. Another Cincinnati first down. A flag, though, is down at the 32. Holding offense number 87. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So that's on Bruno LaBelle. We showed you that graphic earlier about all the penalties for Cincinnati. 129th in the country. Penalties. LaBelle is a handful. And you watch him as he tries to secure the edge. He's not really able to do it. As, as Warren busts to the outside, you see LaBelle 87 there grabbing hold of Bryce Huff and not letting go as he starts to lose contain. Bell had his hands full last week with Bryce Huff, and clearly the penalty yardage is not something that Cincinnati can continue to overcome with the mistakes they've made. Roll out here for Ritter on second down and taking a deep shot. Got a man wide open, but dropped. Jay Sean Jackson couldn't hang on to it. Beautiful design, great throw. It would have been six, but Jackson put it on the ground. Wow. I mean, it was a beautiful throw. Hit him in the his, face. It hits his face mask as yeah. he's about to hit the basket. And on this run, when you're rolling the quarterback to the right, you got to think it's going to be a corner route, right? Because you want to keep the receivers out in front. So they run a post. That's a good job of adjusting off of something they've had success with in the past. Unfortunately, just unable to bring it down. But a beautiful throw and a great design. See how they bounce back from that. Third and 20, and the pass is caught, but well short of the line to gain. Gaddis with the catch. Good coverage by Joey Bryant. So it'll be fourth down, and Cincinnati will have to punt it. Tell you, Greg, when you're the road team and you're playing somebody back-to-back, -back, you cannot give up those opportunities. And that we're going to sit here in the fourth quarter. If this thing's tight, we're going to look back at that play for Cincinnati on offense. Yeah, it's just one of those situations where that face mess gets in the way of the bread basket as you're trying to reel it in. Catch that ball 99 times out of 100. And unfortunately, the one time he has a chance to make a play on the field, he's unable to bring it down. Saw 11th guy run on the field there at the end for Cincinnati. And fair caught, and there's contact at the 25-yard line, but no penalty flag. He got hit by his own guy. His own guy got blocked into him. John Broussard made contact with his teammate, Travion Samuel. No, I mean, he just ran right into him, kind of lost track of where he was. Could have been called for targeting. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a crazy quarter. I mean, it really has. Failed onside kick to start the game. Two running into the kicker penalties. Kick catch interference by your own player. Right. Uh, <laughs> I think Samuel needs lunch from Broussard next week, that's for sure. Yeah. From the 25 yard line, they're going to run Taylor here. And he's past the 30 yard line. They are getting a lot of chunk plays on the ground. Obviously, they're 65 on one carry, but. They've rushed as a team for 126 yards here in the first quarter. Cincinnati's got the top scoring defense in the conference. And what did Luke Fickle tell us yesterday? 
We got to do better this week. Tackle and don't give up big plays. They've done neither. Here's a deep ball by White and incomplete. Trying to adjust was Gainwell to make the catch downfield. He's an excellent receiver for a running back. 41 catches on the year. Bush, though, had really good coverage for Cincinnati. I'm very impressed watching Cincinnati in coverage. They have some great length at corner. I think they're versatile. Both at the nickel spot and at safety. I really like the way the secondary has played. And the coverage so far today has been pretty tight. It's been difficult so far for Brady White to create some chunk yards through the air. Big third and four here for Cincinnati's defense trying to get its offense back on the field. Likely the final play of the quarter. White throws to nobody. That was way over the head of Coxie. Don't know if there was miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback. That is the end of the first here. Spot potentially in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic at stake. A championship on the line. Cincinnati and Memphis have played one. It is 10-7 Tigers. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Visit Livingston Machinery and Chickasha in Fairview. Sports Director Brian Keating on KOCO 5 News. Coming up tonight on ABC, it is the ACC championship game between Clemson and Virginia. Is anybody playing better right now than the Tigers? They've won, obviously, the last four championships in the conference. And since that tight game with North Carolina, they have outscored teams by more than 40 points per game. Here at the American Athletic Conference Championship game, it's 10-7, Memphis on top of Cincinnati. Adam Williams will punt it deep to Ryan Montgomery as we start the second quarter. Off of two hops, Montgomery like a shortstop does a good job to pick it clean with five Tigers breathing down his neck. So Cincinnati won the East Division for the first time in school history. 10 and 2 record on the season, 7 and 1 in conference play. The two losses, Memphis last week at Ohio State back in week two. And they've been ranked in every college football poll. They're number 20 this week. If Cincinnati wins this game, are the Bearcats the highest ranked group of five champion? I think they will be. Yeah, I really believe that. Uh, obviously, a win against Memphis, a team that the committee clearly respects. It's a tremendous feather in their cap. They run Warren here off the right side. He gets maybe two. And they should be. I think we don't want to de-incentivize the group of five from challenging themselves against the likes of Ohio State. If they don't play that game, if they play a directional school, they drop them. Who cares? Right. Two losses need to be taken into account. You win the American. It's an incredible achievement. Ball on the ground. And somehow Ritter got it back. It may actually not have hit the ground. There was a fumble, though. The ball popped into the air as Ritter and Warren trying to figure out what to do on the exchange. And Bryce Huff was there defensively. And did hit the ground. Just hopped right back to Ritter. Keep an eye on DeGuara. He's their go-to guy on third down. Looks like Memphis is trying to get a look where they maybe double him. Inside out with a linebacker over the top and somebody outside. On third and seven, long pass, incomplete. Pierce got his hands on the football but couldn't make the catch. Fourth down. That's well, two drops now that were significant that would have been massive for the Cincinnati offense. Look, Ritter's coming back from a shoulder injury. It's difficult to be consistently accurate, but the receivers have to help you out. Another opportunity there for Cincinnati to extend a drive and are unable to do so because the receiver can't reel in an accurate pass. Smith punting it deep. And Samuel muffs the punt and Cincinnati recovers it inside the 15-yard line. Perry Young was down there for the Bearcats. There's a penalty marker down. Will there be kick-catch interference on Cincinnati? Flag the flag on the play. Watch Travion Samuel here. What do you think? Interference with the opportunity to make the catch kicking team. Number 21. 15-yard penalty automatic. 
First down. So that's on my Jay Sanders. Does he give him enough room here? Timeout on the field. No, he does not. I don't think so. I think it's a good call by the official. And so Memphis will have the football when we come back. Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Kick catch interference on Cincinnati's Trey Tucker. So 15-yard penalty and Memphis starts this drive on its 35-yard line leading 10-7 early in the second quarter. Play action pass, White setting up, and his pass is tipped and almost picked off by Javon Hicks, who's already got four interceptions on the year. Really bad decision here by Brady White, trying to do too much. As there's a good play there by Gardner, undercutting that post, and if it not be for his teammate, would have very likely had an interception. We've seen friendly fire on both ends now with the two Cincinnati DBs colliding. They're going to run it here on second down and nothing for Gainwell. Brought down by Wright. And when you watch Brady White, he's got an interesting release. He kind of lags the football behind his body. He reminds me of Ricky Fowler, kind of a flat release. But watch Rickley as he starts to uncork. That club is way behind him. Same thing for Brady White. Look, his shoulders are already open and his arm is still caught in a position before he even moves it forward. That's how he can generate so much velocity on the ball. A unique release that has been very accurate and efficient for the Memphis Tigers these last couple years. Good job, Andy North. Very good on, on the <laughs> golf analysis there. Third and 10, Brady White. A jump pass that's tipped and almost picked off. Perry Young going to the ground, could not come down with it. Fourth and 10, let's check him with Tom. Well, guys, you're talking about the release there of Brady White. What ends up happening with his ball is the elbow of his right arm comes down instead of up and out. So when he does that, the ball naturally comes down in that drawback, that lag that Greg was talking about, creates a whip-like come through that's about three quarters. Now, he's not throwing from a lower body, but because of the velocity that he gets, he's able to transfer his weight and get some power for the ball to finish. Can you guys break down Tiger Swing, uh, the next the commercial? <laughs> Montgomery on the return out to the 27. They say quarterbacks are great golfers, you know? I mean, Romo is a good example of that. I mean, Luganville. What's your handicap, by the way? Uh, the, way too <laughs> high, boys. Way <laughs> too high. I will say this, though, about this Brady time of White. Year, not so high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, guys, with, with Brady White on that, I think the one danger that we see with Brady White, when you're six foot three, guys, and you, and you have a release like that, you, all, you do have a tendency to have batted balls yeah. at the line of scrimmage. So at six foot three, you're negating your natural height to about maybe six foot six one when you have a release like Brady. But you do gets so much on the football yes and can really transfer his weight as a rotational athlete to get a lot of speed on the ball here's Geddes on the catch and gets about eight yards out to the 30 five-yard line with Francis in coverage. I'll tell you what, Greg, I've been impressed with Desmond Ritter's ability to throw the football. Now, you talk about the shoulder injury, and maybe his accuracy is not what you'd expect, but he's got arm power to drive the ball vertically. We saw that on the dropped ball, and that was a long throw to the sideline right there. Yeah, he's been pretty accurate. Hasn't been super consistent throughout the course of the day, but his receivers have not helped him out. Coming up that shoulder injury, getting the start. He hands it off here on second and two, and they're not going to get it. Going to have third down after we check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Dave. Let's take a look at one of at ts best performances to Atlanta for the SEC championship game. Joe Burrow with about a month to throw this one, and he finds Jamar Chase for Burrow's 45th passing TD this season. That's the SEC record. Tigers up 7-0 in the first. Dave, Greg, back to you. Well, you know who the biggest LSU fans are right now? Oklahoma Sooner fans. Because if LSU wins, that knocks Georgia out. And Cincinnati on third and one. Great second effort by Jared Dokes. Picks up the first down for Cincinnati. But assuming you know, Ohio State, even with a loss, gets in, right? Yes. So Clemson, if Clemson wins, they're in. If they lose, well, then we get a conversation. But right now, Oklahoma's rooting for LSU to win that game. No question. I think the only way Oklahoma's kept out is if Georgia were to win. And that, of course, would put Georgia in, and LSU at 12-1, and one, their body of work against Oklahoma's. You guys side with the Tigers. 
And Ritter keeping it here, gets the first down, and still going past the 30. And they finally get to him, and they force a fumble, and it's recovered at the 10-yard line. Memphis ball, recovered by Leandre Thomas. Chris Claybrooks goes for the arm of Desmond Ritter here and hacks it out. Not only negating a big play for the Bearcats, but creating a turnover as Thomas comes up with the ball. The American Athletic Conference Championship game on ABC is brought to you by Pacific Life. 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Four, where the Built for the Holidays event is going on now. And Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Man, they packed the streets of Memphis. When college game day was here a month ago, Memphis beat SMU that day 54-48. Huge play a second ago by Memphis's defense, and it's all because of the unbelievable hustle by Chris Claybrooks. He's in the backside corner. Ritter gets free, has a lot of open space, but look at the hustle by Claybrooks turning on the Jets, stripping that football. That's why they tell you, kids, when you're carrying the football, keep it in your off arm, keep it in your wide arm, keep it close to the boundary because that's where all those players are coming from the field. And Desmond Ritter learned the hard way there. That was a 49-yard run, too, by Ritter. Here's Taylor getting the call. And he gets brought down after a gain of about three. So Clay Brooks returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown last week. So far in this game, three tackles and that forced fumble. And with T.J. Carter sidelined, it's really important for Clay Brooks to continue to step up on the defensive side of the football. It's been a great start of the game so far for number seven. Run it again on second down and seven and nowhere to go for Patrick Taylor. Brought down by Brian Wright, who's a heck of a player. First team all-conference for Cincinnati. Graduate student from Newcastle, Delaware. So it's third down and seven. It was a great play there as he was engaged. He made the tackle in the backfield. You're on third downs. Looking like you might get some one-on-one -on -one coverage to the top. Let's see if Brady White looks in the direction of Coxey. He's 0 for 4, passing on third down in the game. Facing some pressure here. Rolling out. Now throws. And he's short of the line to gain anyway, but it's incomplete. Intended for Taylor. And so Memphis will have to punt the football. Right there, Brady White was trying to work Coxey to the top. A little in-breaking route, but the pressure up front forced him out of the pocket. A good job there by the defensive line and the linebackers for Cincinnati being able to create that rush and throw the quarterback out of rhythm. What a great series on defense for Cincinnati. I mean, you, you talk about complimentary football. Sudden change situation. Then they step up and... Make a couple of nice plays on the defensive side. So they're going to review this to see if the pass was complete. Even if it was complete, Memphis is going to punt the ball, right? It's fourth down, clearly short of the line to gain. Yeah, but with the way that this game's gone, now a running into the kicker will give him a first down. Yeah, that's a good point, <laughs> right? Yeah, a, I guess it might, be, it might be worth taking a look at. It's happened twice already. And you see as... Does he secure the catch? No, I don't think so. It's really close. Do his feet actually touch no, the ground? I don't think I don't think they do. I don't either. And again, ruling in the field is it's incomplete. And right there, it looks like but both course, feet are off the ground. Does he maintain possession all the way through the catch, too? Looks like it hits his hands. Is that Air Force One, or excuse me, is that Jordan One cleat? On the turf. Well, the other thing is if they if they overturn this, they got to figure out, okay, where is the line of scrimmage now? Fourth and what? It has to obviously right. be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn the ruling in the field of an incompletion. Peter Voss, who is a former coach, he's coached in college, coached uh, in NFL Europe. He is our replay official today. It's really close. Is that left foot on the ground there? He's an offensive guy. We got to be careful. 
You talking about Peter Voss? Yeah. <laughs> Offensive guy. After further review, the rolling in the field stands. It is an incomplete pass, and it is fourth down. This is why I'd love to at some point just go to the NFL rule where you know turnovers and scoring plays are reviewed and you get challenge flags instead of stopping every play. Yeah, and everything under two minutes would also right. be Boot reviewed through. and yep. initiated by the booth. But I'm with you. Sometimes these four-hour games are difficult to stomach for fans. And, and it's reviews like that take 90 seconds, two minutes that really don't impact the fabric or the outcome of the game. It's going to be a pun either way. Montgomery signaling for the fair catch and has it at the 45. Well, I like the plan so far for Cincinnati's offense. Moving the launch point, get Desmond Ritter out of the pocket, make him feel comfortable, nice easy completion to your excellent tight end. And of course, it's so, so good when it comes to escaping. Now this resulted in incompletion, but last week it might have resulted in a sack. Memphis had five sacks. And then, obviously, the presence of the zone read opens up more opportunities for Michael Warren on the ground. Esmond Ritter hasn't been really helped a lot by his wide receivers, so the numbers don't look great, but he's been moving around pretty well. Play action pass here for Ritter on first down, gets hit, able to elude a sack, though, and here he goes again. He just rushed for 49 yards on the previous offensive play but fumbled the ball here he picks up 15 yards not only pulls out of the ball but just heads for the sideline and you're going to see this boundary safety pressure right up the middle he's unblocked and Ritter has to account for him with his legs he knows it too so he's got to move get off the spot break a tackle and get to the open field Last week, with all due respect to Ben Bryant, that's probably a sack. But because of Desmond Ritter, his ability to move and create with his legs just adds a little bit more to this offense that you have to account for. In one end zone has malfunctioned. Please turn off both, both play clocks until they are both functioning. Please reset the game clock to 9.24. The play clock will be held on the field. The back judge will raise his hands at 10 seconds. Thank you. We've seen it all. <laughs> yeah, not really. Not play really. clock malfunction. <laughs> We've seen two roughing the kickers. We've seen a surprise onside kick. We've seen a fumble. By, I mean, by the way, speaking of the fumble, Greg, you notice how Ritter changed the ball to his left hand there? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would, too. Yeah. It was uh, Carlito Gonzalez that missed the sack, by the way, from Memphis. And here's Trey Tucker. Oh, what a hit at the 40-yard line. Big stick by Quindell Johnson, freshman safety out of New Orleans. Great job coming up in the safety spot. Making a huge play there at the line of scrimmage. When Trey Tucker's in the game, they're trying to get the ball. It's no secret. And you have to have an all-points bulletin on number 21. Might not touch it often, but those six, seven, eight times he does touch it, he can change the game. It's a good hit in the open field. Only three touches last week. They wanted to get it to him six or seven times this week, as you say. Here's Warren on the carry on second and eight. Doesn't get much. Austin Hall on the takedown. So now you're looking at third and five, third and six, maybe in four-down territory here. Although they do have two kickers. Paul Smith is their deep guy. His longest this year is 50. And you're on third down. you got to find the most reliable target. You've had some drops already. So keep an eye on number 83. He's the weapon. Josiah DeGuara. Got to find some room for him in the passing game. Instead, the pass goes to Geddes, but he dropped it again. Three drops by Cincinnati receivers. Oh, what's going on with the Bearcats right now? That's got to be really frustrating as Desmond Ritter staying on the field. It was a good read. Went to the right to right spot. And the ball was thrown low and inside. That's tough. I mean, that's tough on the receiver. Yeah. His momentum's working to the left. And the throw, you have to stop on the dime, go back and reach for it. So you'd love to see a more accurate throw. But in a championship game, you got to make that play at wide receiver. So James Smith got a punt here. Would have been about a 55-yard field goal try. And fair caught at the 10 by Samuel. It remains 10-7 Memphis in the American Championship. 
This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Hard to believe it's week 14 of the NFL season, and on ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow morning, it is Sunday NFL countdown. And then on Monday night, Eli Manning is back as the starting quarterback of the New York Giants. Philadelphia fighting right now for the NFC East Championship with Dallas. They're five and seven. Dallas lost the other night, so they're just a half game back of the Cowboys. Giants at two and ten. Will Eli go off on Monday night? Man, how fun would that be? I mean, I, who doesn't love the Manning family? And who knows if it's Eli's last year? But it'd be great to see him. Direct snap to gain while he loses yardage. That was kind of interesting to do that inside your. 10 yard line good play by Brian Wright so gonna be second down and long a lot of talk around uh, Mike Norvell the head coach of Memphis will this be his last game in his fourth season ESPN reporting yesterday that he's the leading candidate to take over Florida State and that might be announced tomorrow he wouldn't confirm or deny that prior to the game he replaced Justin Fuente, who left prior to Memphis's bowl game four years ago to take over Virginia Tech. On second and 12, Gainwell threw a seam and then tripped up. Otherwise, he would have gotten the first down, brought down at the 16-yard line by Wright again. Here are the current Power 5 head coach openings, although it looks like uh, Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss, that marriage is about to happen. I think that is finished. Lane is heading to Oxford, but Florida State, obviously, a blue blood program with a proud tradition. Be really interesting to see if, in fact, Mike Norvell does take that job. Just how much noise he can make. They run it on third and four, and Gainwell trying to fight for that first down, and he gets it at the 21. We asked Norvell about you know, what it would take for him to leave Memphis because he said he loves it here, his family's enjoying Memphis you know, he's a cent he went to Central Arkansas and, and uh, the Arkansas job was another rumor but it looks like Florida State is the one that everybody's kind of keying in on and he, he told us it would have to be a special job and I, I know Florida State has fallen on hard times the last couple of years but I think overall you got to say that's a special job right they're five years removed from being in the college football playoff they're six years removed from a national championship so yes uh, I would consider Florida State special now are there questions that I would ask if I were Mike Norvell? Absolutely. What's the administration? How much support? How are my resources, et cetera? But it's definitely a job you have to consider if you're given the opportunity. They run Gainwell again on first down, and he's out to the 23. So if he does leave, I wonder if he'll take this photograph uh, from his playing days at Central Arkansas, where he left as a leading receiver. Or, or does he go with this picture? Uh, if he goes to Tallahassee, <laughs> I think he's going to grow his hair back out. Why not? The cornrows get that <laughs> going again? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Greg had the same look in, in high school. Here's a screen pass. And Gainwell, nice open field tackle by Gardner at the 26-yard line. What I've been really impressed with, Lugs, is the staff that Mike Norvell's assembled here at Memphis. Very impressed with both coordinators, yes. Adam Fuller and Kevin Johns. And Pete Lembo is a special teams coordinator. Excellent as well. Well, he's had to make a lot of hires because when you have success and there's opportunities to move up the coaching ranks, you're going to have guys depart the program. And so he's done his homework. He's researched the right guys that not only does he feel the best coaches, but are the best fit got a 10-7 lead five minutes to go here in the half a timeout called here by Cincinnati that will leave Cincinnati the Bearcats with two takes the first charge time out of the half welcome back to the American Athletic Conference football championship as part of the Dr. Pepper championship week Memphis leads Cincinnati 10 to 7 with five minutes to go in the second quarter Winner with a shot possibly at New Year's Six and the Cotton Bowl. Our athletic trivia question. The fourth time that two FBS teams played back-to-back -back weeks, regular season finale, conference championship, can you name the first time that it happened? Oh, my goodness. Whoa. It was recent. Yes, that? well, the conference championship started in 1992, so... I'm really trying to think. I don't Not know. Not that long ago. Not I that think. long ago. That's why I say recent. Hmm. 
Meanwhile, third and four here for Memphis. And White back to throw. And it's behind Gainwell. Four drops by Cincinnati. I don't know if that will be considered a drop by Gainwell or not. He did get his hands on the ball. Fourth down. The ball was just slightly high and slightly behind Gainwell, one that he would probably make more often than not, but still a difficult one in traffic over the middle. Again, you got to catch that ball. Championship yes. game, got to make that play. Williams to punt. And it takes a Memphis hop and several more bounces inside the 20 yard line. A 55 yard punt. All right, so you guys haven't got one right all year. That's so not accurate. Let's see if you finally get one. You did, go ahead, go ahead, say something. Just I say have, a number. Uh, throw I'll, it out. I'll say uh, Boise and somebody. Yeah, I, I'll, I think that's a good one. I, I'm going to say Mountain West. No, you guys are no. both wrong again. 2012, Stanford, UCLA. Stanford mm. swept the Bruins. This is the fourth time that this has happened now with uh, teams playing in the regular season finale then the very next week. I love how Dave acts like he knows the answer. Well, I do, but I also have it right in front of me, so that's, yeah, that's why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fraud. Yeah, I love it. Here's Ritter, and he's got a completion to Pierce, and a gain of 15 out to the 35-yard line for Pierce. So here are the four. Well, you guys mentioned Boise. They, they did play Fresno State a couple years ago. Fresno won the finale and then lost the rematch. And last year, Middle Tennessee UAB. So we weren't that far off. Was he, the Mountain West was involved, and he made me feel dumb. Now I'm Yeah, now I'm you should sensitive. apologize to us. <laughs> Here's Warren, gets a big hole. Somersaults into Memphis territory. A 17-yard run and a first down, and Warren shaken up, and understandably after that hit by Thomas. Yeah, this is a really nice job on the front side of the offensive line. Number 75, Chris Ferguson, the left guard, doing a good job of throwing the defender out of the club. Got and pinballed off three guys here after that initial hit from Thomas. Yeah, and he kind of lands awkwardly. I hope he's okay. He's such a huge piece for the Cincinnati offense. We'll see whether or not Michael Warren's all right. Well, Warren, you saw him jog off the field under his own power, and here's an end around to Tucker. Running room and a first down inside the 30-yard line. Penalty marker thrown at the line of scrimmage as Tucker is brought down inside the 30. Cincinnati looks like it's going to continue to kill itself with penalties. Number 52. 10-yard penalty from the spotter foul. Repeat first down. That's on the center, Jakari Robinson. And this is just a dumb penalty here by Robinson. You're going to watch the center work all the way out and around. This is a really cool design, by the way. And, of course, when 21's in the game, antenna's got to be up. They hand it to him. You're going to see the hold on the left side of your screen. Right here, Robinson's in a good position. I mean, he's fine. He's walling out the defender. And Tucker's going to make him right. There's no need to grab the jersey. Just get in the way and allow Tucker to run. That was a really dumb penalty there by the center. Now it's first and 19. Dokes is in the game for Warren, who left with an injury. And a deep ball down the sideline. Single coverage. And it's pulled in by Moj. What a catch inside the 25-yard line. Clay Brooks was all over him. 31 yards. It's a great job. Hand fighting. A lot of contact. You see him secure it. As he goes to the ground, the foot's definitely down, and Cincinnati's going to go tempo, so they don't have a chance to review it, potentially, because it was really close over there on the sideline. And Michael Warren is back in it, running back for Cincinnati. Bearcats looking to retake the lead. Three minutes to go. They have two timeouts left. And here's Warren getting the call off the left side. Ritter and Warren were basically running together for several yards downfield before he actually gave the ball up. Let's go back to the catch and see if he secured it doesn't matter now obviously ball is moving yeah. it's really close and a quick throw out in space that's dropped again five drops this one by Medeiros so they're making 
crazy catches like Moj did with the defender Claybrooks on him, but then they're dropping the easy ones. It's third and one now for Cincinnati. That's yeah, brutal. I mean, this is the biggest game of the year, obviously. Ritter's coming back from a shoulder injury, and his receivers got to help him out. Not been a team that's dropped a lot of passes all year, so this is really uncharacteristic for the Bearcats. Don't expect to run inside here on third and short. And Ritter keeps it. He's to the 10, breaks the tackle, and scores! Touchdown, Cincinnati! The Bearcats retake the lead. For a guy that runs as well as Ritter does, it's only his second rushing touchdown this season. It pays off a seven-play, 80-yard, two-minute drive with a 15-yard run. And Krosa on for the extra point, but a penalty marker down. Full start. Offense number 11. Five-yard penalty. Retry. That's on Leonard Taylor, so another penalty on Cincinnati. Sam Krosa has had three kicks blocked. Cincinnati has as a team, I should say, three kicks blocked this year. So a 25-yard point after. And Krosa nails it. 14-10 Bearcats. It was the same exact play that Cincinnati scored on early in the game. You're going to see DeGuara come back, block. And really what Ritter's reading is number 41. And as number 41 gets tight inside, that's Sanchez Blake, of course, number 41. As he gets tight and he stays inside, there's a lot of space to the outside. Look at the leverage that he was immediately able to jump as Blake came down and tried to fill on the backside. Blake came too narrow. Ritter was able to go wide. He breaks a tackle, and he finds Pater for the second time this season. Really good read by the quarterback on the zone read pull. You gotta love that, too. <laughs> I got six. So you get six bangs on the drum. That drum, that drum's had a, had a tough year. I mean, that thing has taken a beating. If you look at how many times Cincinnati's been able to put a lot of points on the board. Meanwhile, Tom the third ready for a nap. Not Lug not Luganville, the mascot, Tom the Tiger. I'm right, <laughs> I'm right next to him. <laughs> look, it's my pal. Here is Gibson. As we've seen tonight, very dangerous with the ball in his hands. But he runs out of real estate, knocked out of play at the 33. Let's go to Cassidy. And Dave, let's go back to Atlanta. SEC Championship, Joe Burrow with his second TD pass of the day. This one to Terrence Marshall. Also has 123 passing yards through the first quarter. LSU up 14-0 to start the second, guys. Uh, all right, Luke's, what do you got down there? Give us the latest. Well, I got Tom. Tom the Tiger, number three. He's a little worn out. Yes. And um, I'll tell you, the handler over here, guys, literally stuck his hand inside the the cage and petted him right on the nose, and Tom was perfectly fine with it. Yeah, you try yeah. that. Should you I can, do it? You Let can pet him, but according to the glass, you're not allowed to top, tap on the glass. I'm going to do it with my left hand. Yeah, go Dude, for you it. should see the size of this thing's paws, man. Bigger than his Mike? feet? are ridiculous. Is he bigger than Mike as uh, the LSU mascot game well brought down to the 31. Our camera guy Wes, uh, I would too step back when uh, Tom let out that roar. Yeah, and you saw that you saw as soon as he roared that camera shook. <laughs> Reaction there from our guy Wes. Second and 12. White back to throw and his passing complete. Going for Coxey. Third down and 12 now. Cincinnati, if it gets the ball back, going to have some time and two timeouts to work with. Coming up, Capital One Halftime Report. The latest on LSU Georgia, Oklahoma. 
needing overtime, but who cares? They are in the college football playoff, one would think, if Georgia loses. Yeah, you got to think that Oklahoma is in a great position, knowing that LSU currently has a lead. It's pretty wide here on third down. Has not been very effective to this point of the, to this point of the game. Got to get to the 43-yard line here. And going to throw it underneath, that it's incomplete, going for Patrick Taylor. So the clock has stopped since he's going to get the ball back with two timeouts. Also at halftime, they're going to update us on the Sun Belt Championship and the Mountain West Championship games because those contests could play a role in who the highest-ranked Group of Five champion is because whoever has that honor will represent the entire group of five in a New Year's Six game, light, uh, likely the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Williams to punt. Montgomery is deep. He just got it away. Fielded on the 23 by Montgomery. Gets a block and then steps out of play around the 32-yard line, 46-yard cut. Cincinnati has a lead, but, man, they have made some mistakes. They run into the kicker to give Memphis... An extra set of downs that resulted in a touchdown. They had a deep pass that was wide open to Jackson, who dropped it. And, of course, Ritter, after a really nice 40-plus yard run, has the ball jarred loose on the play. And then so many drops, five drops so far for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Yeah, they have the lead, but for the most part, they've done a lot of great things throughout this game, statistically dominating in a few phases and left an awful lot of plays and points on the field. Well, it looks pretty even to me, though, I mean, looking at the, the yards and time of possession there. Cincinnati with possession here. Two timeouts left. Warren and lowers the shoulder that time on Blake. Blake is shaken up. That was a big hit delivered by Warren out of the backfield. And Warren's 225 pounds. This was a big collision. Warren is so powerful. You hope Blake's okay. You see big collision there on the sideline and something goes flying. I don't know if it's the decal or, or something goes flying upon contact. Tell you what, if you knock a decal off a, of a helmet, you're hitting. Yeah, that was a big collision there. Hopefully Sanchez Blake will be okay. Now to second and long. Cincinnati with a clock stop because Warren went out of bounds, 145 to go. Ritter in trouble, steps up, takes off, slides, and it's where the slide starts and where the ball is, so it was at the 40-yard line, so it is not a first down. We'll bring up third and two. Ritter's mobility has been the difference here in the first half. I mean, these plays last week, resulted in sacks or lost yardage or or things of that nature and, and ben bryant did a great job of, of staying competitive throughout the game but ritter now having to account for his legs has really been beneficial for cincinnati's offense and the way they've been able to move it let's take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by at&t ohio state wisconsin tonight clemson virginia on abc tonight georgia is up Utah lost last night, so the Pac-12, one would think, eliminated from the college football playoff. Oklahoma winning, so the Sooners hoping that Georgia loses. What about Clemson? If Clemson loses tonight, are the Tigers still in the college football playoff? I think they are. I mean, just by a process of elimination, who else would you put in? Wisconsin, perhaps, if they were to win? I mean, I have a really difficult time thinking that the outcome of the ACC championship game is going to affect... Clemson Tigers. I think they're one of the four best, and you know, their resume isn't as strong as some of the others, but they've been dominant against the teams they've played. How many people that really think Clemson's going to lose tonight anyway? Third and two. Ritter looking deep here, and there's a lot of contact and a flag. Moj beat Claybrooks. Obvious pass interference. How about the call there? Aggressive play call on third and short to take a shot. Pass interference, defense number seven. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, think about when Moshe had that big catch on the other sideline, Clay Brooks was committing interference on him. And I think you have to say that that's a catchable ball because there's no way Moshe could actually get to the ball because of the contact by Clay Brooks. If you see him, he grabs that 
jersey flap, and it, and it was out of bounds. I, I still think, though, you have to make that call because it wasn't overthrown enough to right. a point where you would say it was uncatchable. Yep. So first and ten after the penalty, 133 to go and two timeouts left. Looking like pressure here from Memphis based on that pre-snap look. Let's see if they can find DeGuara in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Dead Ritter chased out of the pocket on the run. Gets his arm, hit the ball, flutters, and it's incomplete. Pierce battling with Francis for the football, and neither guy came up with it. Let's see who hit the arm of Ritter here. It was J.J. Russell, the middle linebacker. And Greg, you're right. They had DeGuerra, number 83, in the matchup they wanted versus the linebacker. He separated, but the quarterback had to get flushed. That would have been a great one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Yeah, they had him, and that's where he was looking. It's just the pressure got home a little too quickly against that cover zero look defensively. By the way, George is on the board. It's now 14-3 LSU. 14-10 Cincinnati here, but another mistake by the Bearcats. Snap infraction. Offense number 52. Five yard penalty remains. Second down. That is the sixth penalty by Cincinnati here in the first half. And you look at the center right here, Robinson. Everybody's gone except for him. So I don't know. I don't know if he was just a little late there and snapping the football, but another penalty for Cincinnati, forcing them to play behind the sticks. Very similar to your move when the check comes. <laughs> Luke's and I start, and then you you go a little late. Second and 15, in trouble. Ritter gets out of there. And Ritter's going to run and then slides. And mark him down at about the 48-yard line. So he got a couple of it back, but it's going to be third and long. Bryce Hoff was in the backfield. He's got six sacks and 14 tackles for a loss. Two sacks last week against Ben Bryant, who started the game for the injured Ritter a week ago. And a timeout called by Memphis here. Minute 17 to go. And a third and 13 coming up here. So coming into the game, I, you thought Memphis had the advantage because playing at home? Right. Uh, second time they played in eight days. Now that you've kind of seen the game play out, who would you say going into the second half is going to have the advantage? Right now, Cincinnati's been the better team throughout the first 30 minutes. And frankly, I think Memphis is actually a little fortunate to only be down four. I mean, with the big play down the field that was dropped with the fumble after the big run, I mean, this game could pretty easily be... Cincinnati 28-10, so Memphis has to be happy with where they're at right now, but they can't allow Cincinnati to steal points before the half. And a timeout call by Cincinnati with a play clock at six. And that was a good timeout yeah. right there because it looked... They were trying to pressure. Memphis showed a little bit of a blitz look there. Cincinnati wasn't on the same page. The last thing you want to do is not be on the same page in protection that would result in a sack and maybe a catastrophic play. Tomorrow, we have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups on ESPN. They'll tell you who's playing into the Chick-fil-A Bowl, a Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, and the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl on Saturday, December 28th, which is three weeks from today. Reese and the guys going to unveil those games and all the New Year's Six Bowl games, the final top 25 rankings, and a four-hour special that starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on ESPN, as well as the ESPN app. Where will the winner of this game be? And will the winner of this game be playing in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, representing the group of five? On third and 13, delayed blitz, Ritter's hit, throws a deep ball out of bounds. Going for Moj. It is fourth down. Man, this was close. Corner pressure. Right off the edge, they also brought internal pressure, which took care of the back. And Ritter barely gets rid of it as Claybrooks was breathing fire coming off the edge. Really close play right there by Memphis. Samuel lets it go over his head, and it checks up. And down to around the 13 with 
A minute to go and one timeout remaining from Memphis. So you look at the top group of five teams. Again, it's the highest rank group of five champion that will go to the Cotton Bowl. Uh, Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic Appalachian State won today. I'm with you, Greg. I think if Cincinnati wins, it jumps Boise State. Boise's up 10-3 over Hawaii right now in the Mountain West title game. Obviously, if Memphis wins already, being ahead of Boise State, the Tigers are going to go. And if you think Boise's better than Cincinnati, that's fine. I understand that. However, if you say that the reason why Boise's ahead of Cincinnati is because of that second loss, uh, I don't think that's the right way to evaluate these teams. You're basically telling Cincinnati, well, you shouldn't play good teams. Right, don't play Ohio State. Exactly. Yeah. So I... I think you should measure them, and, and based on the strength of the American from top to bottom, I'd be surprised if Cincinnati didn't receive that bid. Here's White, and his pass well overthrown. Trying to hit, I think, Coxie. There were a couple of receivers in the vicinity. Taylor was down there as well. Tell you what, Greg, the, the difference between Brady White in the first quarter and the second quarter has just been pure accuracy, and it starts with footwork. He just hasn't been settled in the pocket. The ball's really gotten away from him. Yeah, he's been all over the place a little bit. And I, I'm a little surprised, frankly, that Memphis is trying to air it out here. You have really bad field position. Just take it to halftime. Don't make a bad situation worse. Yeah, Cincinnati's only got the one timeout as well. They're going to throw it again here, though. White with a pump fake. Now throws, and it's caught. First down, Coxie out to the 31. The clock will stop as they reset the chains. 47 seconds to go, gain of 18. Now I would try to get to the hurry up. A little better field position, you get some chunk yardage. Now I would ramp up the tempo and try to steal some points. Coxie's had a big first half, had a buck 45 last week, a season high. They go to him here on a back shoulder, throw stays and bounds after the catch and lowers the shoulder on the defender. Out of bounds at the 39, a 28 yard pass play. It's a beautiful route. Look at how he's able to turn around Gardner on the back shoulder. Gardner's got a lot of length, almost makes a play on it. There's a nice release initially and a good back shoulder throw, accurate throw from Brady White. Great run after catch. 73 yards receiving for Coxie. Over 1,000 on the season. White gets hit. Gets rid of the ball. And it's caught by Taylor. And they grab him, bring him down in the field of play. And Memphis will have to use that final timeout. Kobe Bryant did a good job there hanging on to the leg of Taylor to make sure that he got him down. 25 seconds to go. What a tackle. It's a great tackle. There's a lot of room and a great play, too, by White. I mean, he's getting dragged down by Tucky. He knows where his outlet is. Where's my bailout? It's out to the right. More often than not, you get it to one of your best ball carriers in space. He's going to make a guy miss and create for you. But right there, a good job defensively dragging down Taylor in the open field. Riley Patterson, who has made a 29-yard field goal today. Season long of 50, career long of 52. And we were watching him in warm-ups. He was making 53, 54 yarders with about 10 yards to spare. But he was kicking it the other way, although it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of wind. I don't think distance would be the problem for him. He certainly has plenty of leg. So as a quarterback, you've got to be reminding yourself constantly here as you get understand that the only thing I can't do is take a sack. Ball has to come out regardless of the circumstance. Right, no timeouts. Second and 12 on the 40. We'll see if Cincinnati brings pressure. They rush four. White still gets hit, and he does take a sack. It was Mike J. Sanders getting the sack. The clock is moving. I'm surprised Memphis isn't over the ball ready to spike it. It took the receivers forever to get back on side, and now they got to run a play. You can't spike it, can you? Well, he was able to get it snapped and spike it in time, but now you just have a Hail Mary with two seconds left. Yeah, it can't happen. And that's as much on Kevin Johns and Mike Norvell, the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Obviously, Norvell handles the play calling. It's as much on them as it is their left tackle who gave up the sack and on Brady White. They called a slow-developing downfield route knowing the one thing that would give them problems would be a sack. you got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly in that case, and they opted to go with a slower-developing drop back, and sure enough, Sanders drops White for a big loss, essentially ending any chance of stealing a field goal before half. 
Now Cincinnati drops three guys deep inside the 20 yard line here. And a penalty marker down. False start. Offense number 10. Five yard penalty remains. Fourth down. And it's on the receiver, Coxie, so just move it back another five yards. So now I think it's going to happen. Spot. I mean, now, though, I mean, that extra five yards might not feel like much. But now it's going to be really tough for Brady White to get it to the end zone because you're looking at a 60, 65 yard throw potentially to get it deep into the end zone. White unloads and it's intercepted at the five yard line. Picked off by Hicks who's running it back. He's got the 30. Hicks into Memphis territory. And they finally tackle him at the 25 yard line. That was almost a disaster. After the interception, White has to make the tackle as Hicks brought it back about 70 yards. So Memphis will get the football to start the second half, trying to avoid a third straight loss in the American Championship game. When we come back, Capital One Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. With all these toys, five bucks and below, you can give and give again. Five bucks? Three bucks? One buck? Yep, that's a lot of gifts under the tree. Five below! Just go! Becca Rain, weekend evenings on KOCO 5 News. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Welcome back to the American Athletic Conference Football Championship on ABC. The winner of this game has a great chance of going to the Cotton Bowl as the highest ranked group of five champion and Cincinnati has the lead at the break 14 to 10. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville down on the field. Greg, if you are at Memphis, you don't feel good, but it could be a lot worse. I mean, it could be a huge deficit. Uh, only down four here at halftime. Yeah, the first thing they need to do is thank their lucky stars because it could easily be 28-10 if Cincinnati didn't have the drop seats throughout the course of the first half of the football game. The other thing they have to do, they have to start stopping the run. Right now, they are allowing over seven yards a carry and have given up a lot of big plays. So Memphis has to be better tackling and playing in space. Memphis will get the ball to start the second half. And here is Gibson on the return. The special teams player of the year in the American brought down at the 25. Excellent tackles. We look at our Pacific Life game summary. Antonio Gibson had a 65-yard touchdown run, the lone touchdown for Memphis in the first half. That was a big play, and, and Gibson picking up right where he left off last week and taking it the distance, and Desmond Ritter, it's great to have him back in the lineup if you are a Cincinnati fan. He's been dynamic. He's been more accurate than the numbers would suggest. He's only 9 of 22, but really his legs have been the difference. He, of course, had the touchdown late in the second half, but has also made some key scrambles, and big moments they're gonna run it on first down to Gibson and he's able to get the first down out across the 35 yard line fans and the Memphis sideline wanted a late hit on Brian Wright but no penalty flag I'm good with this I'm glad they didn't throw the flag of course on that sideline you're gonna have some drama but it didn't appear anything malicious there I obviously don't think Wright knew where he was at on the field either so good no call there by the officials on a 14-yard run. And on first and 10, they give it to Gibson again. He's wrapped up after a one-yard gain by Elijah Ponder. Memphis, lone loss was at Temple. Cincinnati lost to Ohio State in September and then lost eight days ago on this field. It's only the fourth time that the same teams that played in the regular season finale meet in the championship game the next week. On second and eight, play action pass for White with a defender in his face. Throws a deep ball. It's caught inside the 30 by Coxie. Breaks a tackle. Can't keep his feet. Stumbles to the ground inside the 15. There is a penalty marker down back at the 45. 46-yard pass play if this stands. Prior to the pass, holding 
defense number 12. That penalty is declined. It was over the plays, a first down. Such a great job by Coxie there. A lot of contact between him and the Mod Gardner. He fights through that contact, gets on top, and a beautifully thrown football from Brady White. Identifying the one-on-one, -on -one, and White had his fair share of inaccuracies early in this game, but starts the second half, half on a high note. Gibson inside the 10, and maybe a face mask. He's in, touchdown! Memphis back in front. The result of the play is a touchdown. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 12. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So that's two penalties on Ahmad Gardner on this drive. This one here for the face mask. Twisting the helmet of Antonio Gibson. Real dangerous play there. And Gibson, does he get in here? Or did he step out? Did the ball cross the plane? Really close, obviously. Where's the ball when that foot lands? It looks like it's landed there. It's a great angle. It does look as though he's about a half yard shy, doesn't it? And if he is short, now you assess the face mask penalty, although half the distance of the goal is about a millimeter. Right. <laughs> of course, every scoring play is reviewed, and I would be surprised if they didn't overturn the call on the field and mark this ball about a half yard shy. Indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt is needed to say he did not get in the end zone. I think that one's pretty clear, guys. Would agree. I'll tell you what, down here on field level and just seeing this big racehorse they call Antonio Gibson, holy smokes, guys, he's special. He is really good. It's been such a huge player this season for Memphis and a, been a thorn in the side of Cincinnati's defense these last couple weeks. After further review, the runner steps out of bounds with the ball in his possession at the one-half yard line. The ball there. The penalty for the face mask will be enforced half the distance of the goal <laughs> to the one-fourth yard line. Automatic first down. That's so good. <laughs> They, they barely have to move the ball because of the penalty, and it'll be first and goal. Now, you never know, right? I mean, we saw in, in that Oklahoma-Baylor game a huge play made at the end of the half where it looked like Baylor was going to score a touchdown. Baylor had to settle for a field goal. Oklahoma wins the game in overtime. So maybe the fact that you know, Gibson didn't get into the end zone here, well, can Cincinnati come up with a stop? It's 14-10. to 10, That's the score. And you get Dorseus in the game at fullback for Memphis. And they run behind him, and Taylor was brought down. Maybe even lost some yardage there. Good job up front by Cincinnati. There is Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator. So they did lose a little bit of yardage. It's second and goal from the one. Well, if I'm Memphis, this is the down I would throw it. It's four down territory either way at this spot. But if I'm going to throw it in one of those four downs, I like doing it on second down. They run again behind Dorseus. And Taylor didn't get in. Brought down at the line of scrimmage. It's third and goal from the one. Very similar play. A lot of flow. They're off tackle. Problem is, Greg, is now you kind of have to throw it, and the defense knows it. I don't even think you necessarily have to here. I mean, you still have two downs to get it. You challenge your offensive line. But if you get stuffed here, are you really going to try it again on fourth down, or you take the points? I'm going for it. No doubt about it. It is a pass play. Right looking. Now takes off and is in. Touchdown! Something out of nothing on the scramble. 
You see that ball across the plane as both knees are still in the air. It was well covered and defended by Cincinnati. They had a guy there to make the play. He just couldn't do it. And Patterson makes it 17-14. Memphis back in front. Early third quarter here in the American Championship. It's the quarterback, Brady White, deciding to run, fighting for contact and hitting Pater. ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. And on Thursday, it's the finales of the American game and the greatest. First on the American game, learn the story of the Heisman and how it can define a player's career and life. Then it's the top 11 greatest Heisman debates in history. If you missed either of these series, catch up on all the episodes on demand on the ESPN app. Dave Pash, Greg McElroy, and Tom Luganville in Memphis. Under the lights, sun is down, temperature in the mid-40s and dropping. Memphis leading Cincinnati. Championship at stake. Potential spot in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic on the line as well. We look at our 150 years of college football. We take you back to the 2010 Sugar Bowl, the last time Cincinnati played in what is now considered a New Year's Six game. And the Bearcats are ranked number three at the time, but they lost Tim Tebow's last college game, 51-24 to to the Gators. You look at uh, the last two BCS Bowl games they were in, 2009-2010. They had consecutive 11 win seasons. If Cincinnati wins today, it will be their first time since then that they've won 11 games in back-to-back yeah. -back years. On first down, they run Warren, and he is stuffed after minimal gain. Off on the tackle, here's Tom. The guy's talking to Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle coming out of the locker room. I said, what's got to happen for you to overcome some of these self-inflicted wounds? He said, we're going to run it, then we're going to run it again, and then we're going to run it after that. And most notably, continuing to run the quarterback, Desmond Ritter, has been the difference on offense for the Bearcats. That's a good recipe. Memphis really struggling against the run in the first half and allowed a few big plays on the ground as well. And some movement, the right tackle. Lorenz Mentz Both comes out of his stance. Offense number 51. Out here penalty remains. Second down. Here's what Luce is talking about with the play selection. Even 22 apiece. Eight penalties now in Cincinnati. We talked uh, for a while with Luke yesterday uh, about how he's been able to get this thing going again here at Cincinnati, but also about what he learned that experience as the interim coach the one year at Ohio State when Jim Trestle was let go. Long pass here that's caught by Pierce. He's out to the 30 into the 31. And, and one of the big tip takeaways that I got from, from that experience for Luke Fickle is you know, how you put together a staff, because he didn't have a choice when that happened in 2011. Your staff is your staff. You're the interim head coach. And at that point, Luke was you know, 38 years old. Now he's you know, eight years older and getting a chance to run his own program. He's done a really good job putting an excellent staff together. Really great inroads in the state of Ohio and, and a tremendous job these last few years. On third and four, nice catch made by Pierce, and it looks like a first down. Austin Hall on the tackle. You know, you wonder, we talked a lot today about Mike Norvell, who the report says yesterday from ESPN as we double check to make sure he got the first down. Really hard to tell there, but I thought live he got it. Now, the reports that Mike Norvell is going to take the Florida State job. Yeah, what about Luke Fickle? Will he have an opportunity, maybe not after this season, but down the road, or perhaps after the season, to get another opportunity at a Power 5 job? I think he'll definitely be under consideration, but it would take an awful lot to leave. I mean, clearly, Cincinnati, wonderful place to live, and, and with his familiarity with the state of Ohio, he's a great fit. Ritter, he's got some running room, and he's past the 40 and out of bounds. Got the first down at the 46-yard line, an 11-yard run for Ritter. I'll tell you, Greg, Memphis just doesn't have an answer for him, whether it's by design, making sure they've got somebody to account for him late once he leaves the pocket. He's just making too many plays, and Memphis has no answers. Yeah, and you see the defensive coordinator, Adam Fuller, for Memphis right there, the left side of that offensive line. He's able to jump leverage, and there was nobody home to contain Ritter up his legs. Ritter 
makes one nice move in the backfield and gets positive yardage into Memphis territory. Gain of six on the play for Desmond Ritter. Started this week after missing the game against Memphis last week with a shoulder injury. He's so crafty. You know, he's it's not really a burner, but he's so quick and has kind of effortless lateral agility, making guys miss and creating opportunities for himself after contact. So backup defensive tackle Morris Joseph leaving the field for Memphis. Second down and five. Direct snap, Warren able to make a guy miss in the hole and get the first down inside the 40-yard line. Second straight year that Mike Warren has had a 1,000-yard season. Got a rushing touchdown today, 13 on the year. That's a really nice run right here. See him set up the defenders to the outside with just a little bit of wiggle just to make you think that he's going to go out. Then he cuts it up behind his tight ends on the left-hand side and LaBelle. And Michael Warren's been excellent throughout the course of the season, having another nice game tonight. Almost six yards of pop. Memphis stack in the box again. Here comes pressure. Look one-on-one -on -one potentially on a fade route or a vertical route. That's work today, and here it is going downfield to Moj, and he makes another great catch inside the 10. They've done that twice, and Malik Moj, a junior from Atlanta, big target at 6'5", comes down with it. And he's working against the 5'10", Jacoby Francis in press coverage, and look at the height advantage. Francis doesn't locate the football. He turns around, and the ball's over his shoulder. Warren picked up and able to break a tackle. Warren down to the two. Great run by Warren. It'll be second and goal for Cincinnati. They're starting to put the pedal down a little bit, too. Expect the exact same play right inside. Vertical run game. And Warren down to the goal line. They haven't signaled yet whether he's in. It's a touchdown. Michael Warren into the end zone for the second time today. Great response by Cincinnati after Memphis scored and retook the lead. The Bearcats back in front. We'll see whether or not Warren got in here. Very close, congested. It's too difficult to tell where he's at at that point. I'm standing on the back end line, guys. He clearly got in and landed with the ball in the end zone. Previous play of a touchdown is under further review. So they'll look at this a little bit further, but if they have uh, the angle that Tom had, it will get confirmed, and if they don't, then the play will stand because you can't see the ball. Well, you can't see the player. <laughs> and so if you can't see the player or the ball, it's really hard to overturn the ruling on the field. And you can't see the knee either. I mean, that's, that's the other thing. Where is he down? Like you said so many times, indisputable video evidence to overturn beyond all doubt. And I have a lot of doubt as to whether or not he was dropped short there. Yeah. I definitely think this play is going to stand. That, I mean, it's a testament to both coaching staffs, though. Make your halftime adjustments. Memphis comes out right down the field. Touchdown. Cincinnati comes right back out. Answers with the adjustments of their own and responds emphatically. It's no surprise that these two teams will meet, obviously, in the American Conference Championship. They've had tremendous years, and it's in large part due to the excellent coaching that's taking place for both Cincinnati and for Memphis. After further review, the rolling on the field stands. Touchdown. So Cincinnati is back in front with 7.21 to go in the third. Warren with 14 rushing touchdowns this year after 18 a year ago. Desmond Ritter made some really nice plays again running the ball himself on that drive. Sam Crosa on for the extra point. Movement by Cincinnati up front. Goal start. Offense number 58. Five-yard penalty. Retry. Darius Harper. Starting tackle for Cincinnati. Another penalty on the Bearcats. Their second one on an extra point. What, right. <laughs> why are they trying to make life so difficult on Crosa? <laughs> right. It's supposed to be a stress-free environment, piece of cake, nice 20-yard field goal. No, 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 no. We're going to jump off sides. And poor little fella. <laughs> I mean, he's had three kicks blocked this year, too, so... But it doesn't phase him. 
puts it between the uprights and Cincinnati leads Memphis 21 17 Brady White's turn next for Memphis. The American Athletic Conference Championship game on ABC is brought to you by General Mills. Bring more to your game day with General Mills tailgate recipes. See what you can create at wearetailgatenation.com. And Dickies Workwear, yours to make. Go to dickies.com to learn more. Third consecutive trip to the American Conference Championship game for Memphis. Each of the last two years losing to UCF. Double overtime two years ago, and then last year they led in both those games, led by 17 last year, lost by 15. Been bowl eligible for six consecutive years, haven't won a bowl game since 2015, and could this be Mike Norvell's last game as the Memphis head coach? Reports that he is the leading candidate to take over at Florida State. That could be announced tomorrow. He told us yesterday it would have to be a special job for him to leave. So we'll see what happens in the next 24 hours. Now for today's biggest moments of the game, brought to you by the Samsung QLED TV. They run him into the punter penalty that led to a touchdown. You also have a fumble by the quarterback, drop balls on deep throws, some penalties by Cincinnati, nine and all for the Bearcats. Uh, some big catches here lately by both Cincinnati and Memphis. Don't forget, you also have the failed onside kick to start the game by Memphis, a running into the kicker penalty on Memphis that led to a Cincinnati touchdown. Two kick catch interferences. It's been a crazy game. <laughs> We've checked every box in regards to the drama here in Memphis. And they try to run the ball, and Curtis Brooks slams Gainwell to the ground, tries to step over him and get out of the way after that tackle for a loss. I Brooks. I really like Curtis Brooks. He's big. He's 6'2. He's 300. Well put together. And then when you watch him, he's quick. He moves like he's 260. I think this kid has a very bright future and has a chance to still be a terror in this league next year, but eventually he's going to find his way to an NFL roster. He's got a chance to make some noise when put in a position to make plays. Pulling it back, White, and lobbing it deep and overshooting the intended receiver, Magnifico, the tight end. You know, Cincinnati's done a really good job on Gainwell. He's only got 33 yush, rushing yards. Gibson's had the big plays on the ground, but Gainwell has been shut down, and really this is a first team that's stopped him all year. And he had a game this year where he had 200 receiving yards and 100 rushing yards. First player in college football to do that in 22 years in a single game. Well, they need Gainwell at some point to have a big play. And they got to find some opportunities for him to contribute in the passing game if he can't run it effectively. Third down and 11. White fires complete. Coxy, the defender fell down, and Coxy is out to the 46-yard line. Gain of 22. And Mott Gardner has had a tough time containing Coxy. What a nice route. You see Coxy set up into the defender, get a little movement. Gardner falls down. He creates a big opportunity. On third and 11, they're able to pick that up. White throws again. It's tipped in the air and incomplete. Perry Young got a piece of the ball. Another deflection by the Cincinnati defense. There have been several of those. They just haven't been able to come down, though, with an interception. Well, Greg, and that's one of the reasons we talked about with Brady White's release. When you have that drawback and you're kind of slinging it three-quarter and it's long, you can negate your height and subject yourself to some batted balls. Yeah, as you take a look at Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator for Cincinnati, very, very impressed with this plan so far and done a pretty good job against an explosive offense. They go back to the ground here on second and ten, and Gamewell is out to midfield. Yeah, Freeman was really impressive when we met with him yesterday. You wonder if... He's got a, a future as a head coach, still a young guy. He's only been doing this for a short period of time, but really smart. I got that sense from him. But he just has a presence to him that maybe isn't a huge name yet in coaching circles, but it's growing. we got to think that he's going to be a candidate at some point to run his own program because he is an impressive guy. 
Look at the numbers for Brady White on third down passing. One of eight. Here he is on third down and five, and he completes it inside the 35-yard line. It is a first down to the 32 for Kadarian Jones. Really the first time we've called his number today. 35th catch on the year. This is a really nice job. They have a mesh route underneath to account for man coverage, but that big in-breaking route is designed to beat zone coverage. That time Cincinnati opts to play zone, and Brady White exploits it with the in-route. Gainwell on the carry, wrapped up and spun down for a loss by Derek Forrest. But let's go back to Brady White, give him some credit. Remember, he was over passing on third down, and the last two third down and longs, he's completed passes to extend this drive. He definitely looks more comfortable here in the second half. Didn't really look very in control. The accuracy was a little up and down in the first 30 minutes, but he is honed in here in the first 10 minutes of the second half. White off play action being chased and completes it to Taylor and another huge hit. This time Perry Young with the lick on Taylor. So no gain. They will be in third and long again. This hasn't phased Memphis on this drive yet. And are they in field goal range? Riley Patterson can certainly make it from here. It's about a 52-yarder. Last time they got in this setting, of course, picking up the first down is huge, but you absolutely can't take a sack. It'll take you out of field goal range. You've got to be mindful of how long you're holding the ball to allow the play to develop. White throws underneath, and it was behind Taylor. So you're looking at about a 52-yarder here. I like the idea there by White. Hey, we, we have a field goal. At least we have an attempt at a field goal here. I can't sit back here and hold it to allow my downfield routes to develop. That pass rush and that pressure that Cincinnati's bringing is something that could take points off the board. So it was a good job by him getting the ball out of his hands. Just wishes he probably was a little more accurate to give the receiver a chance. And you talked about that sack at the end of the half that, that took him out of field goal range. Maybe thinking about that on that play, too. 52-yard attempt. Patterson, that thing has plenty of love, and it is good. He crushed that thing. He was smoking it in pregame, and he made that 52-yarder look like a 22-yarder the way he hit that ball. And Memphis is back within one point. Riley Patterson tying a career long with a 52-yarder. Would have been good from 62. championship as part of the Dr. Pepper Championship Week. We were saying earlier that could this be the last game for Mike Norvell as the Memphis head coach? Well, Florida State just released a statement that tomorrow at noon, they're going to hold a press conference and introduce the next head coach. They did not say who the head coach is, but ESPN reported yesterday that it's going to be Mike Norvell. Memphis down one. And on the kick return, it is Tucker past the 25. And out to about the 28-yard line. We talked with Norvell yesterday. Didn't specifically address Florida State, but asked him, you know, what it would take for him to leave. And he said it would have to be a special job. Florida State normally is a special job. That's a blue blood. Uh, and obviously, Mike Norvell, the record speaks for itself. I mean, he's been absolutely tremendous taking over a program that was built under Justin Fuente, but they haven't dropped off at all. They've only accelerated, and I think if, in fact, he is named the head coach of Florida State, what an incredibly great hire for Florida State to try to resurrect that program and get it back. 38 years old, young guy still, yeah. was at Arizona State for a few years as offensive coordinator. And Ritter throwing a deep ball here. It's under throw, and it's picked off by Clay Brooks at the 37-yard line. First interception for Clay Brooks this season. Trey Tucker was the intended receiver. Trey Tucker has a ton of speed, but he's not very big. He's trying to fight for Clay Brooks as Clay Brooks goes vertical. But at only 167 pounds, he wasn't able to move the big body corner who's north of 180. 
as Clay Brooks does a good job of walling them off and going up and making a play on the ball. What a great play by the corner. Now forced two turnovers after the fumble he forced earlier. To the air here, White flushed out of the pocket and throws it downfield, incomplete, going for Gibson. You know, on that last play, too, Greg, I, I don't know if, if it was Ritter's torso or his arm that got hit because the ball did not come out clean and immediately lost power, and it turned it into a 50-50 ball, which you don't like in that situation. No, you definitely don't like a 50-50 ball with a guy that's around 5'9", either. Right. So really difficult throw right there. It was late and long. I wonder if his shoulder pain might have something to do with that ball fluttering a bit. White with a clean pocket, and it's a shovel pass and a beautiful move by Gainwell past the 45 and gets the first down. Made a couple of nice moves there. Kenny Gainwell, the rookie of the year in the American Conference. Oh, my goodness. This is an unbelievable move in a phone booth. I mean, look at this. Right there, lined up with the linebacker, Brian Wright, two yards away from him. He can't even touch him. Play fake. White. Throws it deep. Coxie can't come up with it. Incomplete against Derek Forrest. That was a pretty good throw right there. And obviously great coverage by Forrest. Coxie almost reels it in. A little contact. I like how these officiating group, they're letting them play. Yeah. There's been some contact, but it's a championship setting. Let's not throw a flag on every single time. A defender and a wide receiver going up for the ball so I appreciate the way they've approached it but a really close play there for Coxey. Going to run it here on second and ten to Gibson and he is spun down at the 43 about two yards shy of the line to gain it's going to bring up third down. And Greg when you when you look at the perspective as we've got an injured player down you look at the perspective from Cincinnati they told us last night that hey when Memphis gets a first down they're on the 50 yard line or plus they're going to take a shot. Cincinnati ready for it. Arquan Bush shaking up for Cincinnati. The next UFC fight night on ESPN. The ESPN app tonight, 9 Eastern from Washington, D.C. Highlighted by the Overeem Rosenstreich heavyweight main event. The prelims start at 7 Eastern. Here in the American Conference Championship, Cincinnati leads Memphis 21-20. The winner with a great shot getting into a New Year's Six Bowl. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Third and two. They're going to run it here. Gainwell gets the first down inside the 40-yard line. It's Richard Freshman from Mississippi, who's 11th in the country in rushing. Had a terrific season. Hasn't really been able to get going in this game, saw those great moves on that shovel pass, but overall Cincinnati's done a decent job against him. It's been Antonio Gibson, the other guy that's done the damage, big plays on the ground for Gibson. And here's Gibson right here. That's what's so difficult. You have Gainwell to the right, Gibson left. Both can run it on the perimeter. And Gibson's listed as a wide receiver, but they use him as both. They fake it to him here, and a shot to the sideline. It's caught by Coxey. He gets tag team out of play by Forrest and Gardner. Coxie. Well, and Greg, that's the challenge for defenses, right? You've got Gibson and Barnwell in the backfield at the same time. So what if one of those guys motions out? Who do you identify if it's 14? Do you put a linebacker on him? Do you put a safety on him? What if you're not nickel? So many mismatch problems for Cincinnati with those two. They got six yards on the pass play in the last down. Now they're going to run it here. And Gibson has a first down inside the 30-yard line. They've run that play about seven or eight times now. I mean, almost every carry that Gibson has, I feel like it's on that play or something similar where they're an offset back and they're in split. They haven't really found an answer for that look just yet. And now here's Gibson split out at slot. That's what's so difficult to defend. He can play running back and receiver and does both extremely well. And first down, back to the ground game, and Cincinnati all over that. Gainwell stuffed. First guy there was my Jay Sanders, defensive end for Cincy. Inside a minute to go now in the third quarter. Memphis wins. It will be a 12-win season for the first time in school history. A Cincinnati win would give them back-to-back 11-win -back seasons. And a great chance 
Here's that look again, too. I mean, keep an eye on Gibson and see if they hand it to him. Instead, he motioned out of the backfield. Taylor is grabbed in the backfield by Brian Wright and thrown down for a loss at the 35-yard line. It's a setback of almost seven yards. Yeah, and watch him. He's just going to fly right through the A-gap on the left-hand side. And because of those pressures, or because of the pullers, excuse me, with the guard and tackle leaving, there's nobody home and they can't get to him. So a good job by Wright there in the backfield. They spot him at the 32, and Memphis is in field goal range. Third quarter comes to an end. Memphis will have third and long when we come back. Cincy by one, back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We welcome you back to the American Athletic Conference Football Championship as part of the Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Cincinnati leads Memphis by one as we start the fourth quarter. Later tonight on ABC, the ACC championship game between number three Clemson and 23rd ranked Virginia, 7.30 Eastern time. Tigers playing as well, if not better than anybody in the country. But don't tell that to Dabo Sweeney. He doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> in fact, he doesn't want to hear anything whatsoever from the media. He doesn't believe you. Yes. Meanwhile, third and 14 for Memphis. They made a 52-yard field goal try in the last possession. It'd be about a 50-yarder from here. Brady White from the pocket. Moves to his left and throws it downfield into traffic. Coming back to try to make the catch was Coxey, but it's incomplete. Really close. Obviously, Brady White's arm got hit as he was trying to release the football. Coxey working in one-on-one -on -one there. As you see that right hand get hit as he released the football. Patterson looking to give Memphis the lead back. A 50-yard try. Already made a 52-yarder. Man, he is absolutely crushing the football. He drills another one. And Memphis is back on top. In warm-ups, Riley Patterson was making 60-yarders with ease. That was a 50-yarder, and he smoked the football. Tonight, after UFC Fight Night at Sports Center with Scott Van Pell, they'll be joined by Herbie and Reese, who will give their college football playoff top four predictions, plus coaches around the country make their team's case for the playoff. Best moments and highlights from Fight Like Hell Night in the UFC honoring the late great Stuart Scott. Sports Center with SVP, ESPN, and the ESPN app. The Memphis Tigers back on top here, 23 21. There's Desmond Ritter, the Cincinnati quarterback as they're body surfing on the Memphis sideline. 14.47 to go here in the championship. And boy, he looked like he fielded that on the one-yard line and stepped back into the end zone. Now, you can, you can wave and call for a fair catch, but to field it and then step back into the end zone... I mean, where's the ball? Is yeah, the got, ball outside the end zone there? That's what's tough, is you can't see where the ball is. And if the ball is outside the end zone and then goes back in, it would be a safety. It would be a safety. Ruling on the field is a touchback, but it's not the feet. It's, it's where the ball is, and it makes it so hard to tell, especially when on the field they ruled it a touchback. How do you overturn it? It's really hard, because you can't tell exactly where it is. Fortunate break there for Cincinnati, for possibly. All kinds of movement on the right side of the line for Cincinnati. Offense number 51. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And it's almost like, you know, Trey Tucker, the, the, the return man there. I mean, again, you can, the new rule is anywhere on the field there, I mean, you can signal for a fair catch and you get the ball to 25. It, just like he spaced for a second. And forgot about that. We're being told that 
the replay review uh, replay booth is saying he didn't have full possession of the ball until he was in the end zone therefore that's why they called it a touchback here's Warren off the right edge and he's knocked down at the original line of scrimmage at 25 so it'll be second and 10. I think you're going to get a heavy dose of Michael Warren here second start to tick off the clock obviously time not a factor at all but as we start to get late in this ball game, legs start to get a little tired, arms start to get a little tired, and running the football becomes your friend, especially when you have a powerful back like Michael Warren. It's Warren again, up to the 30. So it'll bring up third down at about five, plus these two teams have been beating each other up, and this is the second time they've played in the last eight days. Huge third down here for Cincinnati. Their best option in the passing game has been relatively quiet tonight. DeGuara has only had a couple catches. Let's see if they look in his direction. He's in the slot. Ritter throws high and incomplete. He was going for LaBelle, the other tight end. So it's fourth down. Cincinnati will punt it back to Memphis. And he had LaBelle, who's... Mostly used as a run blocker. That ball way high. This is a big body tight end. If you just throw it right in his number, it's going to collapse around it, and you're going to have plenty of room to pick up that first down. Just an accurate throw there by Ritter. And an injured Cincinnati player as Josiah DeGuara, the guy you were just talking about, who they have not targeted very often, just went down. Oh, they were lining up for the punt. So a timeout. Memphis by two. The American Athletic Conference Championship game on ABC is brought to you by CarMax, the way it should be. And Pacific Life, 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Welcome back to the American Football Championship. Memphis is in the title game for the third straight year. Tigers lost each of the last two years to UCF. Cincinnati is in the American Championship game for the first time. And it's 23-21 Memphis. And the Tigers will get the ball back after a Cincinnati punt. James Smith kicking it to Travion Samuel. Three of his five punts have been placed inside the 20-yard line. Second-team all-conference punter from Australia. Played five years of Australian rules football. And Samuel makes the fair catch at the 27. Take a look at our crunch time brought to you by Cheez-It. This is the game a week ago. Eight days prior to today, they met on this field. If Memphis wins, Memphis wins they host. And they did. Claybrook started it early with a 94-yard kick return for a touchdown. Coxie had a 46-yard touchdown catch in the fourth quarter, and the Tigers beat the Bearcats by 10. Winner of this game, a great chance of getting into the Cotton Bowl as the highest-ranked Group of Five champion. We will find out tomorrow when the playoff committee releases its rankings exclusively on ESPN. Brady White back on the field from his 27-yard line, playing with a lead now early in the fourth quarter. Hitch and throw, and a drop. Magnifico could not hang on. Seen a lot of passes that should have been caught in this ball game that were not. Yeah, that was a good job by Brady White. That's called a second window slant. Initially, it's not there because a defender dropped right underneath it, so he had to hold it just a half second longer and delivered it accurately. That's one that Magnifico has got to bring in after the accurate throw by his quarterback. See the numbers for White. Under 50% completion rate. They put him on the run here. And a nice catch by Coxie who stays in bounds and is up near midfield. So a 20-yard catch and run for DeMonte Coxie. It's just easy pitch and catch. The corner bails way off. As Coxie's gotten on top a few times, they roll the pocket, make a nice, easy throw to the quarterback's throwing arm, rolling right for a right-hander. Very easy to be accurate. 
So good design and good job after catch. 165 yards receiving today for Cooks. He had 145 last week. Memphis runs the ball here. Gainwell bouncing off of one man and then planted by Ponder. Let's go to the studio in Cassidy. Thanks, Dave. And now for today's All-State Mayhem Moment, Mountain West Championship, Jalen Henderson on the run. Gets hit. Looks like he'll be taken down at the one here, but gets the reach over while airborne. Boise State up 31-10 in the fourth over on the ESPN. Dave? So Boise State making a case. Try to get into the Cotton Bowl. Up big on Hawaii. They hand it off on second and nine, and there's nowhere to go for Gainwell. Do you guys think if Memphis wins that because it's ranked higher than Boise State right now that it will be the team from the group of five that's in the New Year's Six game? Yes. Okay. I think the question revolves around Cincinnati. Yes. Is would the win against Memphis be enough to vault them over Boise State, who is an excellent team, Luke? Yeah, I, I agree, and to be honest with you, I think it may be. And, you know, to answer your question, Dave, uh, I, th I think if the committee felt strongly enough about Boise, they'd already have them in front of this Memphis team. Third and ten now for the Tigers. From the pocket, White in trouble, sacked at the 40-yard line. So you had Brooks back there and uh, Ethan Tucky. Yeah, you're just going to watch the right side of this offensive line just kind of give up a little bit. You see right there, big Scotty Dill, number 79, kind of pulled forward as Tucky was able to work the edge. It's a good rush there by the outside linebacker. Ryan Montgomery is deep. Williams to punt. Boy, Cincinnati needed that stop. Missed opportunity by Memphis to take some time off the clock. The punt is blocked. And it's going to go out of bounds around the 30-yard line. But Cincinnati finally got to Adam Williams that time. It was Wilson Huber that gets the punt. You watch him right here. He works into the shield. And Cincinnati's done such a great job. Special teams all year. They step up again. But the bounce goes in Memphis's favor as Cincinnati will take over at their own 30-yard line. Back in Memphis for the American Athletic Conference Football Championship as part of the Dr. Pepper Championship Week. The Memphis Tigers lead Cincinnati 23-21. The Bearcats block the punt. Wilson Huber able to get a piece of it. But it's still rolled all the way down to the 30-yard line of Cincinnati. And now the Bearcats on first and 10 get a negative play. Warren brought down by Huff in the backfield for a loss of five on the play. And for the most part, this dynamic defensive line for Memphis today has been somewhat stymied. Last week, they were the difference in the game. They created a lot of disruption and made life really uncomfortable for Ben Bryant. They've been a little quiet today. Their Huff breaks free and makes a big play. A downfield throw that's on the money. A first down catch for Pierce. Great pass by Desmond Ritter, who missed the game last week because of an injury to his throwing shoulder. Put it on the money that time. Beautiful throw. I mean, that is an incredible throw. NFL type of throw. Cover two. The corner's responsible for the flat. The safety's off over the top. And you're all the way. And you got to throw it that far. Beat the safety with the ball. That was a beautiful throw bouncing back by Desmond Ritter after he was a little inaccurate on his last attempt. 29-yard pass play. They run Warren straight ahead, and he gets good yardage, six or seven. Also, the guy that made the catch, Alec Pierce, he's been the guy that Ritter has targeted more than anybody today, other than Moj on some of those deep balls. But Pierce's dad played college football at Northwestern. He's got a brother who is a basketball player in North Carolina. Pierce, a sophomore from just outside Chicago. A favorable run look from Memphis's defense. Let's see if they hand it to Warren here. Gonna throw it here, and the pass is wide, but what a catch by Medeiros. That was an incredible grab. And again, they've had a lot of drops today, but 
That was beautiful. My goodness, that was a beauty. <laughs> how do you make that look easy and have the other drops? <laughs> We've seen some really easy catches. That one was not. Unbelievable catch from Medeiros. But he's short, so it's third down. Four down territory if you're Cincinnati. Offensive line has played well today. You got a powerful back. We expect two downs to get it here on the ground. Here's Warren, and he's able to get the first down, muscling his way down to the 35-yard line. Gonzalez on the stop. We're at eight and a half minutes to go. Each team with three timeouts remaining. Total yards pretty much even. Score almost even. Memphis by two. This would be a spot on the field where I might think to take a shot downfield. With the way they've been running it, looks like Wildcat is going to be the answer. You'd expect them to keep it on the ground throughout this drive. Yep, direct snap to Warren. And he is thrown down after a short gain. True freshman Jalil Clemens on the stop. Be about a 50-yard field goal from here. They have two kickers they employ. Cole Smith has only got two attempts this year, but he's their deep place kicker. Made a 50-yarder this year. Again, they're going to go direct snap Wildcat with Warren as they motion out the quarterback, Ritter. And Warren able to break a tackle and come up just a yard short of the line to gain. Third down. Let's see if they go with the exact same thing. Are they going to keep it in that Wildcat look? It's been so good for them throughout the course of the day. And that's probably what I'm going to do. I like getting that Wildcat spot. I'm definitely going to keep it on the ground. I'm going to try to force the edge right there on the right-hand side. The Ritter is going to take the snap this time, though. He does give it to Warren. He's brought down. He did try to extend the arm out, but he was down. Cullens made the tackle, and then Warren went with the extension. So he's marked short. Do you go for it here on fourth down, or do you try for the field goal? They're going to go. They're getting up to the line quickly here to snap it. They're going to go with a quarterback sneak. Ritter under center, and pushing, gets a shove from behind, but I don't think he got it. Look where the officials are, though. Boy, where the officials are lined up, it looks like he did get it. You saw a player for Cincinnati come in there at the end and shove Ritter forward. And based on the spot, it looks like a first down for Cincinnati. And this is very fortunate for Cincinnati, too, because they had substitution issues. And 12 players on the field are both under further review. Okay, so 12 players on the field didn't even see the flag thrown. They're going to look at this and count the numbers to make sure that that's correct. Let's take a look at it. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the quarterback, nine, 10, 11. So they do have a little bit of an issue too. Watch at the top. As things are kind of, as he's going off the field, pierces, they have 10 guys on the field at this point, then another guy's trying to run on the field. It's outside of frame right there, but it was chaotic there on a critical down a distance. Luke Fickle, you would think he would have loved to have tried to call timeout there and try to put their best foot forward on a critical fourth down. And to your point, it, you know, if he's outside the frame and you can't see it, you can't tell the ruling in the field was there's 12 guys on the field, which means, again, you have to have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. And because they were out of frame, how do we know? You, you can't. I mean, it, and you could see it clear from the booth, but it isn't reflected on the television, and that's the only thing the referee has to see. And frankly, the red, the referee, the white hat, his back was to the Cincinnati sideline. He's watching the play right in front of him, so he couldn't see anything that was going on behind him when there was a Cincinnati player that looked to be on the field. And you see Mike Warren push Desmond Ritter forward, and they got to figure out where the spot is if there isn't 12 guys in the field. But let's count them up again here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. And up here is where 12 is. Yeah, right. You see the foot. And, and it's, it's just right off frame. You can see the shadow. You can see the foot. 
My question, guys, is why would you substitute there if you knew you were going to go for it and you knew you were going to QB sneak it? Keep your same personnel on the field, line up and snap the ball. I don't know that I've ever seen too many men on the field called and them not have video evidence to either support or say that the ruling in the field was incorrect. And of course, they also review in the spot on the quarterback right. sneak, which yep. is very difficult to overturn, just knowing the chaos that was going on in the pit. But I'm with you, Dave. I I've never seen anything quite like that, and I I'm just shocked with how well coached Cincinnati's been, how smart they've been throughout the course of, of this season, and they've had their fair share of issues and penalties today, but... That was a loss of poise there. Why on a substitute, critical down though, Greg? Yeah, I mean, and, and why rush on a critical down? Right. I mean, if they, they clearly knew that they were going to do that, which is fine, but then just keep your same personnel in the field, line up, and snap the ball. Well, the other thing is they didn't signal whether it was a first down or not. So what is the ruling in the field? Is it a first down for Cincinnati, or did Cincinnati turn it over on downs? They still have the sticks on the field and the fourth down marker out there, but they'll obviously probably measure, too. Once they confirm the spot or allow the spot to stand, they'll measure it and see whether or not it's enough for a fresh set of downs for the Bearcats. Because obviously if it's a, it's a five-yard penalty, it's fourth down and five from about the 30, and now you have a decision to make if you're, if you're Luke Fickle. Okay, we're told they did rule it a first down on the field, but if it is 12 men on the field, it, it's fourth down. Because if he got the first down, you have to accept the penalty, which would then give Cincinnati fourth, fourth down again. They could kick the field goal to take the lead here. Correct. A lot to unpack here with this officiating crew, who I think have done a great job today. It's been a unique game. They've let them play, too, Greg. They have. They've let, allowed them both to be physical. There have been some penalties, for sure, but it's been what a championship game should be. You've won on the field. Charles Lamartina is our referee. He's done a great job today of explaining things, but he's got his work cut out for him here. Let's see what he has to say. After further review, there is no video evidence to, to change the spot, the ruling on the field stands, and there's no video evidence to determine 12 in on the field. So what's interesting there, though, because they didn't throw a flag, but... And it's because the official was looking at Desmond Ritter under center. His back was to the Cincinnati sideline, and unfortunately... But they the, said, though, that there were too many men on the field, but they never threw a penalty flag. So we need to get some clarification as, as to whether they actually called. They didn't call it. Field. No, they didn't whether call they it. They were, they were reviewing it. They were reviewing it. Okay. Okay. So they did not throw the penalty flag. They were just looking to see whether there were 12 men on the field. As we showed you, you can't tell via video whether there were 12 men. I, I know you can't tell via video. But I understand why the Bluebirds are out here in this sauce because there were 12 Cincinnati Bearcats on the field. It just wasn't supported by video replay review, which is an unfortunate break for the Tigers. They're going to go with the uh, Wildcat here, the direct snap to Warren again. Runs behind those two tight ends and gets the corner. Driven to the ground at the 22 yard line. And so, gain of about three on the play. We're nearing six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Memphis leading by two, a championship at stake, a possible spot in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, the New Year's Six Bowl game on the line as well. Gotta think Cincinnati's just gonna continue to try to pound the football. Here it is again, Wildcat. You know what you're getting. It's been pretty effective. Just Michael Warren straight ahead running the ball. He's inside the 20. And brought down at about the 18-yard line, again by Sanchez Blake. So you're looking at third and three. Tell you what, Greg, where those tight ends go, the ball is going. Something to keep an eye on here if they choose to keep it on the ground. They just took Warren out of the game. They're bringing Jared Dokes in. Yep. Dokes is certainly capable. And so is Ritter. Absolutely. Might be a situation, too, where you sneak DeGuara Maybe get Ritter on the move, get DeGuar on the move. Maybe sneak him out in the flat off a run. On third and three, they hand it off to Dokes, and he did not get it. It is fourth down 
So if you are Luke Fickle, are you going for it or are you taking the points, which would give you the lead? And you're running the ball so well. I mean, there's been very little disruption for the most part from Memphis's defensive line all game long. As an offensive guy, I I'm going for it. I, I don't want to leave it to chance with my kicker. We've been running it great. Our backs are powerful. Our offensive line has handled the challenge of blocking these active and athletic defensive linemen. We're going to have to call timeout, guys. I would, that's what I would do, though, for sure, because I want to talk about it. I want to think about what is our best play in a short yardage situation. Tune into the ESPN app for the post-game trophy ceremony. Who will win the American Championship? Will it be Luke Fickle's Bearcats or Mike Norvell's Tigers in what could be Norvell's last game as the Memphis head coach? Florida State has a press conference at noon tomorrow to introduce the head coach. The Seminoles did not announce who that is. ESPN reported yesterday that it's going to be Mike Norvell. And the winner of this game likely... To the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic, a touchback. It'll come out to the 25 from Memphis. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. So Mike Warren with two rushing touchdowns. Coxie and Gibson have been dynamic. Really, the only two players from Memphis that have been productive offensively. They had a handful of lead changes, some crazy plays, a couple of uh, running into the kicker penalties at extended drives, a failed onside kick to start the game. It looks like it's going to come down to the wire here in Memphis. Tigers have all their timeouts. And they've got a kicker in Riley Patterson that's made a 50-yarder and a 52-yarder in this ballgame. they got to get to about the 35-yard line of Cincinnati. And they're going to throw it over the middle. It's a catch for Gibson. And out to the 39, 14 yards. Here's Cassidy. Dave, coming up next on ABC, Virginia and Clemson in the ACC championship game. That's coming your way 7.30 Eastern, again on ABC or the ESPN app. Guys? Clemson looking to secure a spot in the college football playoff for the win as Memphis runs Taylor here, and he fumbled the ball at the 42-yard line. And an offensive lineman for Memphis got it back. Scotty Dill, the right tackle, comes up with it. And fighting for extra yardage. That ball just gets ripped away by Brian Wright, number 11. Scotty Dill, right place, right time. Able to hop on it after what was a pretty chaotic moment there at the bottom of the pile. And Brian Wright, who forced that fumble, is injured right now for Cincinnati. One of the best players on their team. Who they really need on this last drive. Yeah, that's potentially a big loss, so hopefully he's okay. There's Riley Patterson, who's 3 for 3 today. 17 of 19 on the year. Talked about the two booming made field goals he had, the 50 and 52 yard <laughs> makes, which uh, would have been good from 60 and 62, maybe longer than that. But the way he's kicking it, they might be in field goal range already. <laughs> Empty set as Gainwell motions out of the backfield on second and seven. White is looking for Gainwell on a back shoulder throw that's caught inside the 35 yard line. Great toss by Brady White to his running back. And that's a great job taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one against a safety. That's Derek Forrest who is charged with having to cover Gainwell, who's so explosive. It hasn't done much today, but made his presence felt there on the deep ball. They get 25 yards through the air, come back and run Gainwell inside the 30. Gainwell's such a good receiver. Again, he had a game earlier this year, over 200 receiving yards and 100 rushing yards. The first player in college football to do that since 1997. So versatile, man. So versatile. 
and so difficult to defend. And when you line him up in the backfield alongside Gibson to, to the left of Brady White, it's a lot to accommodate for. And a hand it off to Gibson here, trying to get the edge. And he steps out of bounds after he got the first down, though, at the 20-yard line, 2.39 to go. Gibson saying, give it to me again. Keep feeding me. And that time, a nice block by Barnwell opposite of him to get him to turn the corner really well done in the backfield Barwell's not very big he stuck his nose in there this formation has been brutal for Cincinnati's defense because you can hand it run into the left with Gainwell or you can hand to the right with Gibson really difficult to defend Memphis going to keep it on the ground here as Gibson gets pushed out of bounds by Derek Forrest there's a Injured player for Cincinnati, it's Van. Malik Van, a sophomore from Cincinnati. And a physical game, man. Really physical, both teams. Doing an excellent job of playing well in the trenches. You see Van getting tended to. There he is as he reaches out. Here's Van. As he reaches out and tries to make a play, kind of lands awkwardly on that left side, and that's the side that the trainers are looking at now for Cincinnati. Brian Wright, by the way, is back on the field for Cincinnati after being injured a couple of plays ago. Memphis uh, just continuing to get into that two back look with Gainwell on one side and Antonio Gibson on the other. It's exactly what it looks like they're going to do because so far today, Cincinnati has had a really difficult time handling this look, knowing the options that you have out of it. And they run it. Gibson inside the 15 yard line. It's a first down and goal. A first down and goal for Memphis. And if you're Cincinnati, at what point do you start using timeouts? Because once they get rid of the chains here, they're going to wind the clock. You've got two timeouts left if you're Cincinnati. Do you use them? Not yet. Still plenty of time for Cincinnati. Obviously, it's going to become an issue here very quickly. Because Memphis is just going to bleed the play clock well, here. You only have two, though, anyways. So, recall timeout after second down. Potentially third and they're handling this the right way at this point. And Gibson brought down after a one yard gain and Luke yeah. Fickle will use the timeout. There you go. I'll tell you guys, this is every coach's offensive dream. You've heard the phrase, we've got to run the football when we have to. I think that's baloney. You want to run the football when you want to. And that's exactly what Memphis is doing right now. No question. So much attention being paid to Brady White, and rightfully so. So far, the difference maker today, for the most part, has been Antonio Gibson with the big plays he's been able to create. And then Gainwell has stepped up here in the fourth quarter as well and said, I'm not going to let you have all the credit. I get some touches myself and, and make some plays when the opportunity presents itself. Memphis down one, minute 26 to go, second and goal. Cincinnati with one timeout left. And they will go with Gainwell and Gibson again in the backfield. A championship potential spot in a New Year's Six Bowl at stake. Here's Gibson trying to get the edge. And he stays in bounds as he's knocked down by Forrest, and Cincinnati will use its final timeout. So you got third and goal. If you run the ball and you don't get in the end zone, you can take the clock down to about 30 seconds before you try a field goal. If, if you throw the ball and it's incomplete, you're kicking a field goal, and the clock stopped, and Cincinnati's going to have maybe a minute to work with, how would you handle this if you're Memphis? I'd run it. I'd stay in that exact same look that we've seen the last few plays. I would line up Gainwell to my left. I would line up Gibson to my right, and I would hand it to Gibson to the wide side of the field. That way you take out of the possibility of potentially running out of bounds. Make sure you tell Gibson beforehand, 
don't go out of bounds under any circumstance because even if we have to settle for a field goal in the setting, they're going to have no timeouts left. Ritter's been somewhat inaccurate at times today through the year. And it's a running-based offense that is not built to play from behind. So if I'm Memphis, I'm not taking any unnecessary risks. I'm going to try to just hand the football off and and let the clock be my friend in this situation. You've also got a head coach in Mike Norvell that might be coaching his last game with the reports that he's the leading candidate to get the Florida State job. Does he go down swinging here uh, and, and throw the ball and try to get the touchdown here through the air and trust his quarterback, Brady White? He is going to throw it out in space to Gibson. He's in the end zone for the Memphis goal. will go for two to try to make it a seven-point game. Cincinnati will have a minute 14 on the clock with no timeouts when it gets the ball. Well, they did throw it, but it was high percentage. Yeah, it's essentially an extended handoff. Just get Gibson on the perimeter. That was a well-designed play. Very low risk. Get it to your best playmaker in space. And Gibson does the rest. What a game from that young man. Going for two here. It's the rollout to the right. And there it is. White being chased, throws, and it's knocked down, incomplete. Good play by Hicks to break up the pass intended for Jones. It's a five-point Memphis lead with 1.14 on the clock. And here's another look at the touchdown. This is no different than running the exact same play that they've run all night. You're handing it to him out of the backfield, but in this particular case, it's a nice, easy throw behind the line of scrimmage. Almost nothing can go wrong on a play like that. And you get one-on-one -on -one with Gibson against the defender. And here's the two-point conversion. Going with a little sprint to the right. It's a good job and good recognition by White and an accurate throw. The one that Jones should reel in more often than not, but a good defensive play there by Cincinnati. And so Cincinnati out of timeouts, 1.14 on the clock. Can still win the game. See what happens here on the kickoff. Ray Tucker and Ryan Montgomery are deep, and Riley Patterson who certainly has a powerful enough leg to kick this into the end zone. Cincinnati, you gotta imagine they're just gonna take the touchback. So nothing comes off the clock. 1.14 to go. Let's go to Kevin Agani in the studio. Dave Gregg, reminder here on ABC tonight, number three, Clemson, riding the nation's longest winning streak at 27 games, getting ready for Virginia in the ACC championship. Dabo and the squad, they look locked in. We're less than 30 minutes away from kickoff. Back to you guys in the Liberty Bowl. So Clemson obviously playing for a spot on the college football playoff. They might be in even with the loss. The winner of this game has a great chance of representing the group of five in the Cotton Bowl. Biggest thing he, here for Ritter, get the drive started. Have to have a positive play on first down. Little pressure from Memphis. Ritter's pass is caught over the middle at the 40, and Pierce is in the Memphis territory. So on the first play, they take it all the way to the 45 for 30 yards. The clock will stop to reset the chains. So plenty of time. No need to panic. Under control through the quarterback. It's one on one up top. Pressure again. Ritter down the sideline. Out of bounds. Going for Pierce. Clay Brooks in coverage. That was a good job there by Ritter, recognizing in a tempo situation that Memphis was going to bring pressure. And he had a one-on-one -on -one at the top of the screen against press coverage. And that get incompletion doesn't kill you, Greg, because at least slows things down and stops the clock. It's no different than spiking the football, essentially. You take a shot instead of spiking it, but it gives you a chance. Ritter on second and ten. Long throw, and it's caught by Medeiros, but out of bounds. So incomplete. It is third down and ten. Let's see if Medeiros. 
Harris caught it. Yeah, you see that ball. As soon as he gets possession, that left foot is already out of bounds. See this situation for Cincinnati. No Josiah DeGuara on the field. As he subs on late, now he comes in. He's in the slot at the top. The excellent tight end. I'll be looking his direction. He's been quiet today. Memphis has done a good job on him. Let's see if Cincinnati can find him. The Tigers bring pressure. And the quarterback is hit. Ritter throws it deep. And it's caught near the 20. Medeiros pulls it in. Again, the clock will stop to move the chains. 46 seconds to go. Once the ball is down and the chains are set, they restart the clock. And they're going to spike it. No timeouts left. Second and 10. Ball on the 21 of Memphis. It's a beautiful throw by Desmond Ritter. Pressure again. He knows he has man coverage. He's got to beat the extra defender as they bring the all-out pressure and a perfect throw against that defense is that corner route, that smash route. Working against inside leverage and a beautiful catch by Medeiros laying out. Were you surprised at all that they spiked the ball in that situation and wasted it down? No, they did not. Time, time is more important than the downs at this point. Saving those precious seconds is huge. Yep. Second and ten. Pressure again by Memphis Ritter. Just gets rid of the ball. Was he outside the pocket that time? It'll be third and ten, 39 seconds to go. Last couple downs from Memphis defensively have been all out pressure. Cover zero. Which means there's one extra defender blitzing that Cincinnati cannot block. So they need to do one of two things here. They need to identify their best matchup in one on one and identify it quickly. Or they need to go extra protection. I think that best matchup is right here on an out route potentially to DeGuar. Movement on the right side of the line. It'll be third and 15. Another penalty on Cincinnati. Ball start. Offense number 51. Roger on penalty. He makes third down. So that is the 11th penalty by Cincinnati. It's on the right side of the offensive line. It's Mets. It's like just not on the same page again. With the center, Jakari Robinson. Looks like Memphis is backing off now with their defensive look off of that penalty. Ritter is hit, able to break the tackle. And then throws it out of bounds. It was Bryce Hoff that had pressure. It is fourth and 15. They have to get to the 11-yard line to keep this drive alive and keep the game going. If you're Memphis, do you come after them or do you play it safe? I play coverage. Right there, you were able to get home by only rushing four. I would try to do the same. Stay deep as the deepest and tackle the ball in front of you. You look at the look, though. It looks like man coverage all over the board. And a timeout is called by Memphis because Cincinnati is out of timeouts. 29 seconds to go. Fourth and 15. And obviously a ton at stake. What a win would mean for both of these programs. The likelihood of getting into a New Year's Six game for Memphis that has been in this game now three straight years and lost the previous two for, to UCF and Cincinnati, which it's been nine years since they've been in a New Year's Six game. Yeah, huge moment. I mean, fourth and 15, love the buildup here. I mean, you love knowing not just are you going to win your conference championship, but beyond that, what the possibilities are. So it's an exciting moment here. And if I'm the coaches on both sides, I'm saying, hey, we have to find our best play in this scenario. And maybe if it's not the best play, I got to find my best matchup. Who's the best offensive skill player for the Cincinnati Bearcats? It's Josiah DeGuara. He hasn't been at 100%, a little bit banged up. You got to look in his direction. And based on what Memphis showed before the timeout, it looked like he was going to have a one-on-one -on -one with Johnson. He's right here at the number three. He's going to have man coverage one-on-one -on -one again. Ritter on fourth and 15. Lobs it for DeGuara incomplete. There's 
a penalty flag down, though. A flag is down at the line of scrimmage. championship will belong to the Tigers. <laughs> 26 seconds away from the first 12-win season in program history in what could be Mike Norvell's final game as the Tigers head coach. Cincinnati cannot stop the clock, so all Memphis has to do is snap the ball, take a knee, and the game is over. What a great game. Incredible heart on display by both teams. As there's only 10 guys on the field for victory formation. White takes a knee. That's it. The Memphis Tigers, twice in eight days, beat the Cincinnati Bearcats and win the American. for Mike Norvell. Thomas standing by with Coach. Well, Coach, maybe that wasn't quite the way you drew it up throughout the week, but describe this feeling and the performance of your team tonight. It was so incredible. I mean, all year long, we've been a team that's uh, had to respond in, in the face of adversity, and they did it once again tonight. So proud of, of this, uh, just the heart of these guys. I mean, unbelievable character. Uh, just really proud of this football team. Coach, I can see you're emotional, obviously, in terms of your future. Over the last 24 hours, reports have surfaced that indicate you will be the leading candidate at Florida State. What can you share with us on that decision? And this is a, this day is about them, man. We got an unbelievable football team, coaches, everybody involved. I mean, to, to be able to, to come here tonight and to find a way to win that game just is such a special opportunity. What type of time frame do you have on that decision? Uh, you know, guys, I'm, all I'm focused about is this, man. I'm going to go celebrate with my, with my guys. It was an incredible night. Uh, you know, uh, you know, obviously, we're just so fired up for this program, this city, and everything we've been able to accomplish. Well earned. Go enjoy it. Thanks so much. Florida State will have a press conference at noon tomorrow to introduce its head coach. Will it be Mike Norvell? Clearly didn't want to answer the question there. The Tigers are champions of the American Conference and more than likely go into the Cotton Bowl. A 29-24 win over Cincinnati. For Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, our entire outstanding ABC crew, I'm Dave Pash. Congrats to the Memphis Tigers. Now we send you to Kevin Agati in the studio. Dave, thank you so much. Norvell's next stop, ACC, ACC championship coming your way in less than 20 minutes. Dabble and company highlights, analysis, JV and Mark after this.